I think we are ready to go here. Um, so my plan for today is I kind of wanted to work a bit on um, some enemy design stuff, but not like mechanical design. Um, I wanted to work a little bit on some visual design. I've had this head or this idea going on in my head um, where uh, all the enemies <laughs> should be made like completely out of triangles um, and like, but shaped triangles. So almost like mosaic sort of things. Um, and I don't really know what that's going to look like logistically, so I'm going to play around with it a little bit today and see where we get with it. Um, it might be one of those things, um, that, uh, we scrap. It might be one of those things that really takes off. I don't know. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna try it. See what we get. <clears throat> Um, so first thing I'm probably going to do is open up bl Blender and keep that open um, in case I need to use that. But I have already made a couple triangles um, just to play around with, just to see what kind of shapes we can make. Um, so the, the idea is the enemies are not going to have, like, how do I say this? They're not going to, like, necessarily resemble anything particular um they're going to be like abstractly something like maybe the flying enemies in the beach level are abstractly fish with little propellers on their tails or something like that so it's not going to be like a one-to-one -one, um demarcation of the enemy type uh or the, like the thing that's representing um so i don't know let's play around a little bit see where we get with it um I think I've already even got an animator set up on the flying enemy here, uh, if I remember correctly. Doot, doot, doot. Um, yeah, nice. Okay. Um, also, uh, if anyone was here yesterday, and saw I had the code window in the bottom corner of my screen, um, like down here. And I do still have that, but I made it smaller because I kind of felt like I was blocking things. Um, yeah, just let me know uh, if you think that like that's a better change or not. I think it might be, personally. Um, okay, so I've got like this tiny little state machine sort of thing set up that I'm gonna pipe into the animator. Um, and I don't really know how I wanna do this yet, um, but I do know that I want the animator um, over here to be like a multi-layered sort of a thing. Um, that meaning, uh, the tail is going to have a layer and then also, um, like the actual enemy movement is going to have a layer. Um, and reason being for that is that I kind of want the tail, like the little propeller on the tail, like I was talking about, to be a bit agnostic of everything else because I think it should just kind of be going all the time so the enemy has some motion to it all the time um, is my thought. Um, so actually maybe let's just get something basic um, for the tail nailed down first uh, and work with that a bit uh, since that's kind of the thing that I already had an idea for um, which means I am going to need um, some triangles to work with Hmm, how do we want to do that? Uh, you can see the shader is still messed up too. It's doing that weird clipping thing. Actually, man, that really bugs me. That's going to get replaced here sometime today too. Because um, it is really quite an eyesore. <laughs> hey Lily, what's going on? Good to see you back after now like two years. <clears throat> um. Okay, what do we want to do here? We want this guy... Um, and I think the tail, what's this pivot referring to? That's, so that's currently the top of the sphere. Um, and it would make sense that the tail would be on the other side of the pivot. Um, yeah, let's do that. So I think we're going to, inside of here, have a parent object, we're going to call that tail pivot. 
inherent object just means that whatever is down inside of this object here on the side, whatever I put uh, down inside of there is gonna move if I was to move its um, parent. So if I was to move this, anything underneath it will move. I can kind of show, show that to you. Let me grab one of these triangles. Triangle. I'll just grab a 45 degree triangle here. Um, so you can see I don't have that triangle directly selected, but if I was to move the thing that it is parented under, then it also moves. Um, so that just makes it easy to, uh, to be able to figure out how everything should go together. I miss you in my life also. I think you should stream a Sonic playthrough again. I would like to do that. I've actually been thinking about doing that. So yeah, I, I think I might I think I might try to make that happen um, at some point. I'm mostly just doing dev stuff right now because that's what I'm spending most of my time on. Um, but I wouldn't mind doing some video game stuff too. Uh, I always have fun doing that. Um, Hey, Leaf, uh, le wait, can I do it? Li Li-Fi, right? Li-Fi? Li Li-Fi, that was it. Hey, Li-Fi. <laughs> Good to see you. Um, okay, so, uh, let's scale this guy down. I think for right now, I'm gonna turn off this renderer just so I can kind of get an idea of what this looks like. Right yesterday, wrong today. Oh no! What a disaster. Wait, can can you write the uh, pronunciation for me? You should change your category, bro. Oh, what does it say? Hold on, I'm checking it now. Um, do 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 do. I learned the hard way yesterday that I should definitely pause whenever I lot. Layfi, Layfi, got it. Okay, I can make that happen. Um, under development. Wait, what should I change it to? Is there a better category? Um, is Unity a category? No, see, we, we tried this yesterday and it I couldn't find it. There's like Unify and that's like it. I mean, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think Twitch, I think there's a game dev or programming. Let's see if programming is one. Basic programming, that's not so bad. Game dev, dev guy, game dev story, game dev tycoon. Um, yeah, let's just do, let's do the basic programming um, and just say that that's close enough. <laughs> Okay, um, so uh, just in case you guys missed it um, from the beginning here, um, uh, what I kind of want to do is I want to start doing like a base idea of what the enemies are going to look like, and I have this idea of them being like almost representative mosaics in, in, a, in a way, um, which kind of makes sense because like when they fly off the screen, um, they, you know, explode into uh, squares and cubes and stuff like that. So it kind of makes sense that they'd be geometric in nature in the first place. Um, but I was thinking triangles because obviously points are, you know, naturally a bit aggressive in the in the human mind. Um, so I'm just playing around and seeing what I come up with here. There's always science and technology. A lot of co coders stream under that. Uh, yeah, why not? That sounds like a great idea. Hold on, I'll switch it. <clears throat> oh, I almost reported myself. I wonder what happens if you do that. Maybe I'll try it sometime. Um, science and technology. Perfect. Thanks for the advice, guys. Hello, Duckman. Well, hello, Lias Li Lias. Oh, jeez. <laughs> How do you pronounce your name? Hello. How are you doing, man? So I was kind of thinking, like, the back of this. I'm going to do this for the flying enemy, which I'm currently on the rolling enemy. What the heck, man? That's not right. Um, 
I'm just going to copy that and put that over here. Um, for right now, we're going to unpack that. Leas? Okay, I will remember forever. And that needs to now go zero out, because that's in the wrong place. There we go. So I was kind of thinking like these flying enemies here, these are the guys, um, well, he'll, this one will do it. Um, these are the guys that kind of like go down towards you like that. Um, I was kind of thinking that they might like kind of be fish-like a little bit. Um, and maybe have like little propellers on the back of their tail or something like that, which could be kind of cute. Um, so I'm thinking we might be able to kind of get a weirdo sort of propeller shape, whoops, um, with triangles somehow. Let's just play around a bit, see what we can get. Um, so if we had, if we had a triangle at 45 degrees, and then we had another one on the other side. What does that look like? Um, what degree would that need to be at? Is it 25? No. Is it just 90? No. Uh, is it 45? No, is it? Are you going to make a level for Dawn when it comes out? Uh, yeah, probably. I actually did a little bit of level design on Dusk. Um, nothing like super serious, just like tiny little things um, a little while ago. Um, and I'd like to do some more because um, I, I do like doing that sort of stuff when I can. <clears throat> Who else is planning on doing some level design uh, when the SDK comes out? Um... I think that should be, you know, somewhat serviceable for the moment. Oh, I should be doing this in 2D. That's going to make this so much easier. Ignore the gigantic honking tree right behind all of these guys. Is this for Rubber Ducky and the Rainbow Gun? I'm kind of out of the loop. Good question. Um, this is not distinctively Rubber Ducky and the Rainbow Gun. This is for a new game in that same IP series. Um, that I'm tentatively going to call Ducky and John. Um, so, you know, Rubber Ducky was made back when I was, like, a teenager and had a different view on life. And, like, that view on life was very associated with that game, like, that bubbly optimism. And I still kind of have that now, um, but it's definitely different and it's matured. And I kind of want to make a new game in the same IP to represent that differentiation and maturity. So, I, that's what this project is going to be. Um, is kind of the hope. Uh, it's fun though, it's a really fun project to work on. Um, level design is very much not my strong suit. Neither here, but we can always get better at it, right? Um, okay, so we've got two of these. Is that too small? That's way too small. I think it was fine where it was at, um, just for testing sake. So, I, I think the way that this is going to work is to do this in kind of two layers of the propeller. So we've got, we'll have like a back layer that has some sort of a shape to it. Um, and then a front layer that has some sort of shape to it. And then they'll spin at different speeds or something like that. Um, hmm. See... Okay, actually, wait, wait, wait. I think I need more triangles here for sure. Because this is not, you know, this is not going to be what I'm exactly thinking. But if we had more angles coming out like this, you know, something along these lines uh, or something, it's the more and more you do that, the more circular it's going to be, which kind of makes sense because it is propeller-like. Oh, you know what I should be doing? I need to reference a pinwheel. Where the heck are the pinwheel references? Because that's pretty much exactly what I'm doing, right? Um, here, let me drag one of these into... What's a good one? This guy looks like something that we can use. Let me just drag this into the project and I can, I can let you guys see what I'm thinking a little bit here. Um, 
Hold on a mo. This is uh, how to make a pinwheel the image. <laughs> um, da -da pictures. Max res default. Where did that go? Da -da -da -da. Sprites. I'll just throw it in here for the moment. So, like, this is essentially a circle made out of triangles, right? Just in a clever sort of a way. Um, so, what I'm kind of seeing here, this is interesting. Um, max res default. <laughs> Yeep. <laughs> um, what I'm kind of seeing here is we've got, like, a triangle. Can I blow this up? I need... Yeah, there we go. Um, I know that that's, like, right behind the code window for you guys. Okay, this guy right here. Um, so we've got like a triangle here, which is, and then the same piece of paper is making another triangle here. And I could simulate that same sort of an idea by just simply having two different triangles, um, that are kind of making that shape. Um, hey, just real quick, how's my mic versus the background music level? Should one or the other be, uh, more or less? So I'm kind of thinking like 45 degree triangle here and kind of, what is that? This is not quite a 45 degree triangle. It's a slightly different size, but maybe we can, can barely hear the background, honestly. Okay, let me turn, turn the background music up a little bit. How about slug diet? Um, yeah, let's... Let's kind of work off of that for a second. I like the idea here. Um, uh, I'll just put it in as a reference image in the scene for the moment. If I drag it in as a sprite, I think I can just do that. Um, so if I change that to sprite, womp, um, and eh, this is one pro problem with having it organized like this. Focus. Whoa! What are you doing? No! There we go. <laughs> um, okay, we can scale that down a little bit. Kind of vaguely hit the center there. Hey, what's up, Warhawk? How you doing, man? So, okay, I like the pinwheel idea. Let's just do a little bit of like blatant copying of the shape of the pinwheel and then edit it um, to make it more into what the style that we want. Um, just so that we have something to work off of here. Um, so, we could do something. Maybe I'll color these a little bit too, right, right immediately, so you can get an idea. I'm doing decent, but kind of frustrated you. I'm doing pretty well. Had a pretty good day. What's frustrating you? Um, so, okay, it's kind of hard to see because it's just like a blank gray color. Um, but that should be more the shape that we're looking for, I think. Um, I kind of want to color these right immediately, just to get an idea of what that would look like if they had some color associated with them. Um, so what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to make some new materials. Um, I guess this would be in beach related. Oh. I have so many materials already, and I know I know I should be using like that class that makes it so that you can have the same material but um, give it different properties. But it, I just can't see it then in the inspector, um, and so it's like ah. Oh, no. Very new coding just started Thursday actually, but me and a buddy of mine made a text-based game in Python that has its own combat system and having a few bugs with it. Oh, dude. I mean, first of all, congratulations for being able to make a text-based game um, with combat uh, when you've just started coding. That's that's very, very good stuff. 
Um, and second of all, yeah, it can be so totally frustrating. 100, 100% get that. Um, we're just gonna call this pinwheel mat test one. Are you just doing it for fun? Or is it for uh, class or what's it for? Um, and we'll just get kind of a nice shade of red. I don't know, it doesn't matter too, too much. Would you like to try it out? Absolutely. Um, after I'm done uh, streaming here, I'll definitely try it out and send you some feedback. I'd love to. It's especially frustrating when you don't really uh, fully understand why it's wrong yet. Tell me about it. <laughs> so pinwheel mat test two. Um, going to use same shader and real quick copy over the color and then just make it a little bit lighter. So that's going to kind of get the idea across um, of it being behind the other one. Um, obviously with you know some extra detail added and stuff um but you'll kind of see how that works out uh once i've got these positioned uh correctly and stuff i don't think that the enemy is necessarily going to have all these pinwheel colors particularly um but this is just kind of helping me get an idea of what this could look like um so that we have a place to start just for fun yeah, no, dude, that's the perfect way to start. That's what I started doing, too. Um, I think that's a great idea. Um, I think I'm going to call these a leaf, a pinwheel leaf. And put those into... Woo! Into a parent object here. Nice, that reminds me of a little text adventure game I made in Python a while back for class. Yeah, uh, was it for a programming class or um, specifically like a game dev class? Um, boy, that parent is just not quite where I want it to be. Um, I think for rotation's sake, I think this parent is going to need to be like... Maybe down here. Here? What does that look- when that rotates, what does that do? Um, yeah, that- that'll look about right, I think, when we've got, like, other leaves in there and stuff. Um, nice. So we're just going to copy, and we'll make one other set of mats so I can tell cover color differential, and then I'll just go, you know, one to the other, one to the other sort of a thing. I had a bug that took months to find out because uh, the cause because it only occurred for a single frame but made the physics all messy. No, that's horrifying. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, what's the best way for me to send it to you? I can email it and I have a GitHub. Um, actually, um, not to shill my Rubber Ducky Discord, but um, there's uh, if you. Um, uh, here, I can drop a link in chat. Um, on my Rubber Ducky Discord, I've got uh, a Game Dev Projects tab for people to share projects so I can, I and other people can take a look at them. Um, so let me grab you a link for that. That'd be the perfect place to share it. Womp. Feel no need to like join forever or anything, not trying to chill myself, um, but uh, there is a great place to do that there, and I will see it there. <clears throat> okay, let's get another real quick set of maps going on here. Yellow pinwheel mat. Um, so we want it to follow like the general color pattern of this red, just because if it doesn't at all, then it's not going to look right, and we're not going to be able to tell what's going on. Uh, so let's start with the red, and work from there. Something like that shouldn't be so bad. I know you guys can't see the little pop up there, which is unfortunate. Um, Hopefully I can 
get something going that'll work a little bit better. It was suggested I do like a window mode, but then like all sorts of other problems come up. All right, stream keeps freezing, but I would assume you said to put it in Discord. Yeah, uh, there's um, there's a uh, game dev project section right there in Discord, and if you could pop it in there, I'll, I'm definitely going to see it there. So that'd be the perfect place. Um, is it freezing for anyone else, or is it just because uh, I think it says it's doing okay on my end here? Two. It's fine for you. Okay. Da, 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 da. I guess this is more orangey than yellow. Or yay. Okay. We can just alternate those two colors um, to get an idea of how that's looking. Um, one thing I noticed that I didn't notice on the red here is this is not actually rotated correctly. So let's get that repositioned. A little bit of overlap is not a bad thing here, um, especially because it's going to be like pretty zoomed out like there, so you're not even going to notice. It's your end. Dude, I hear ya. For the longest time, the only reason that I ever stopped doing streaming, actually, back from when I was doing it in college, um, and if Lily is still here, she can she can attest to this, um, that uh, I went back to my, live with my parents for a while, and the internet there was just so, so incredibly bad. Um, like, hedging on dial-up sort of bad. My internet is too slow for 1080p60. Yeah, no, I totally, totally get that, man. Well, I appreciate you being here, nonetheless. It really does mean a lot to me. Um, okay, so... Um, now that we've got two different colors, we can kind of try to assort these and then get an idea of how we like, the, like um, look-wise, whether it's working out. So if I was to rotate tail pivot, no, it's not placed correctly, so the, I'm going to need to probably move these all around at some point here, um, but we can work on that in a little bit. Um, I'm just going to take the color leaf that I want to work with. Oh, before we do that, we need to make sure that this is at the right place. Yeah, no, that's totally fine. Okay. Um, so, we can rotate this guy around. And we're definitely need going to need to layer these guys a little bit more intelligently. That does not look great right now. Oh man, did you guys hear that? <laughs> Thunderstruck, just like right near my house. <laughs> yeah, that was totally thunder. It's it's been raining pretty hard all day. Okay, we'll just put that a little bit behind, and we can put it... Oh, let's do this, like, okay, so that's going to be 0 0.01, 0 0.023. Okay, it seems like at 0 0.03 um, it should layer correctly. So we'll go one past, so that'll be 8, just to make sure that all the layering is working out. I can't load Discord invite on my laptop, so I'm trying on my phone. Okay, let me know if that doesn't work. Um, I've got a permanent link somewhere that was just like a, a temp link that I um, grabbed from the Discord. So this should be making about 90 degrees, right? And this one would then be at about 45 degrees. I mean, obviously it doesn't need to be exact. In fact, it's probably better if it's not, but... Be right back. My phone seems to have spreaded legs and gone for, for a walk. <laughs> you might want to get that looked at, um, either by a tech specialist or by a doctor. I'm not sure which. <laughs> um, right. I'm getting distracted here. <clears throat> Rotate this chap around, and probably so he'll be at like what twelve. Be the idea. Get a phone wizard. 
if only. Um, so the layering is still wonk as heck, but I mean, only can do what you can do. Um, I kind of feel like this would need to be a little bit further. I do also want there to be a little bit of inconsistency here. So I'm gonna just randomly take these a little bit in and out just so it's not perfect. It makes it look a tiny bit more natural, I think. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna have a little piece in the center of all of this here to, oh man, it is raining so hard right now. Jeez Louise. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna probably have like a little thing in the center here to distract from all of this mess because that looks super not good. You know why that doesn't quite look right? That needs to be layered. Z layering is not going to be the ultimate option here, but for now it'll work. Um, we can take that guy out to approximately here. This looks super ugly, but once we add some detailing and stuff, I think it'll look quite a bit better than it does right now. Um, it's more about getting the shape in at the moment than anything else. Um, also, all of the dark spots should be above all of the light spots. I think that's going to help sell this effect a little bit better. Um, and I want to turn that off because it's kind of messing with me a little bit. Um, and that needs to be at like 16. Okay. Um, so first order of business, let's just touch up some of the positions of these leaves here. Um, and then start working on making that center look a little bit less, less bad. So that should be, I think, more like here. Oh, it would be. Oh, you know, it'd be kind of cool if this was going to be like a dual color thing. If all of the yellow ones were closer in than all of the red ones, and all the red ones were on top of the yellow ones. Actually, I kind of like that. Let's give that a go here. Um, I think that actually could work pretty well in terms of selling like a certain effect. Now. That's not what I wanted. Um, okay, let's get let's get the red ones above the other ones here, real quick. We'll have like a standard height for the two of them, like the two different versions here. I contacted the phone wizard and they have decreased my phone. It no longer has legs, thankfully. I think we're all thankful for that, trust me. <laughs> so that should be at like 0.04-ish. And then all the yellow ones will be behind it. At zero. Oh, that would be in front of it. I mean, that's... Get rid of that for a moment. That is not horrible, even just like that. It's not terrible, but I think it can be better. Um, posted on uh, Discord. Awesome! Yeah, I'll make sure to take a look at that. Thanks, man. Um, I mean, obviously, it's not like in any way finished, but what do you guys think about this general style for like a little propeller on somebody's tail? That would be like their quote-unquote locomotion system. Um, do you like that? Do you think, like, what would you do with it? I'm okay with it being a little bit abstract, um, because like everything in Rubber Ducky Land is a little bit abstract, like these guys. Um, but I don't want it to be too abstract, so if it's just not reading well, we can work on it. 
such thing as I think I'm like Lizard Boy is still my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I like the lizards a lot too. Um I think the first of all the red should be on top. Um Looks good. So you think it does not look bad, um, because I think it will look better, uh, once we get some more, uh, detailing and some different colors in, because I don't think these are going to be the colors I choose here. Probably just have one color, honestly. Uh, I don't mind this. Let's, okay, let's redo the coloring. I know these are called yellow pinwheel mat. Um, I like how colorful it is. I think maybe having some kind of center object, like a circle, could tie it together. Yeah, I think you're right, man. Let's do that first. Good call, good call. Um, before we change anything else. So let's just arbitrarily grab up a sphere and just kind of play with that. I quite like it without the center object, personally. Well, let's take a look, see which one uh, ultimately looks better. Um, one thing that's kind of nice about these more abstract art styles is you can totally get away with just like plopping a prefab with a mat uh, in the center of objects, because it's like far enough away that it doesn't really read that badly <laughs> once you put like a good color on it and stuff. Um, I don't know, should it be smaller? I almost feel like it, it should be a little bit smaller and maybe not exactly centered or anything. So if we had it like, maybe something like that, and then obviously, you know, gave it a color. Mm, I think I might like that a little bit better. I don't know. Let's let's try coloring it and see. I'm projecting that I will like it better, but I want it evenly centered between these guys for sure. And a little bit smaller for sure as well. Um, but let's try coloring it first, because if it doesn't get any better after it gets colored, I don't think um, that it's going to be quite right. Let's just use one of the yellows for now, um, so we can test. Um, textures, that's not what we need. We need each related. I think I did that backwards, didn't I? Yeah. So imagine like we had a more enemy design coming off. So this would probably be layered behind whatever is happening in the center. So like, you know, we've got enemy over here, pinwheel in the back, tail leading to it sort of a thing. What do you guys think? Honestly, I do kind of like the colors though. I wasn't really thinking of having this be too terribly colorful, but I don't know, that's kind of cool. Hmm, I am deciding here. Uh, let's get it so that I'm able to spin it around um, just with like a handle or something. So that's tail pivot right there. I kind of feel like I might want to pivot the, or spin this around on its own. Um, so I'm actually going to just make a pinwheel pivot. So pinwheel pivot is going to need to go like right in the center here. Any thoughts um, on how uh, how it looks with like the center object there? Let's see what it looks like when it actually would like rotate around. Something like that. Especially if we had like a little bit of animation on each of the individual leafs to give them a little bit of character. It's so it's kind of like that versus like that. Oops. Versus like that. So it's very easy to swap out the two ideas. I don't know, there is definitely benefit both ways, but I think the sphere gives it a little 
Um, it looks ever so slightly off-center and it's bothering me like crazy. It totally does look a little bit off-center, doesn't it? It's because a couple of these leaves aren't weighted quite correctly. Um, hold on, we can probably fix that pretty easily. Um, I think this guy needs to come up a little bit. And then this guy here in the back needs to come down a little bit. Oh, I don't think that looks better at all. What have I done? <laughs> Wait, what's the one, What what's causing the issue here? I think it is this leaf here. Needs to change a little bit. Oh, and maybe this one down here needs to change a little bit. Is that better? Is that better? <laughs> I can't tell. <laughs> um. Oh, maybe the top yellow leaf needs to move up too. That's more like it. I think that's better. Um, so. We've got that guy. Turn him off. I think for now I want to run with the sphere because it does give it a little bit of distinction, but once we actually get like the rest of the enemy visual part in, then maybe we'll change that up again and see if we, how we like it. Um, but at least this gives me a place to be able to um, place the general enemy design. Actually think it looks more balanced if we do something like that, which is strange. Let's just experiment a little bit. We can always control Z. I'm trying to make a shape with the inner color there. I do like it where it's kind of got some, like, some rough edge to it. I don't know, something is bothering me about this leaf right here. It, so, something is just a little tiny bit off. Um, I think that's, it's... Uh, <laughs> I was gonna say, I think it's okay for now. Let's let's just run with it for now. It's gonna, I mean, it's gonna be spinning like constantly anyway, and that's gonna make it easier to balance. Um, I will say that now that you've pointed it out, though, <laughs> it's definitely bothering me too, uh, for sure. <laughs> uh, I can't just leave it. I need to work with it a little bit more. So sorry. Yeah. Terrible, horrible. <laughs> Maybe that needs to come in a little bit more. Oh, that is actually looking a little bit better now. Oh, I think that's that's significantly better. Maybe just move it up a tiny bit. Just to give it a little bit of sharpness and personality. Okay, that's that's significant. Better, I think. Um, let's see what it looks like when it rotates, because it might look really bad. <laughs> um, that's a single leaf. Um, it's definitely not symmetric entirely, but it's not terrible. With a little bit more work, I think that'll work okay. Um, but we don't I don't think we need to worry about it too much right now. Right. Um so let's get I'm gonna turn down dust music just a tiny tiny bit. Um maybe turn it up in you guys' ears a little bit because it's a little loud on my end. There we go. <clears throat> okay, um let us 
work a little bit on like the body of the creature um because i think that's okay for the moment so we've got the tail pivot and i think so the tail pivot we can move oh oh dear that's not right okay whatever um we might need to move all that stuff around a little bit so it rotates correctly um, but I think I want the tail pivot to be centered to the pinwheel as well. So we're just going to, here's a quick tri trick for doing this, um, if you guys work in Unity at all. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to um, uh, unparent all of these objects, please. And then I can just move where I want the parent object to be onto um, like the center of the pinwheel and then reparent. And it should uh, now spin perfectly on that axis. Um, and again, it's a little bit off center, but you get the idea. Um, it makes it super easy to do it. It's kind of the point. But I think inside of tail pivot, I want, oh no, wait, wait, wait. Do I want this inside of tail pivot? How is this thing gonna rotate? Is it gonna rotate from the front or is it gonna rotate from the back? That's the question. Um, I think, I think we're going to want that to rotate from the back or from the front. No, definitely from the front. Definitely from the front, 100%. Um, meaning that we actually need, we could, we could just use this visual pivot object. Let's use that. Um, Okay, so whatever we do is going to be inside of here then. And that is going to be um, enemy body, I guess. Now we have to answer the question of how is this thing going to look, um, like what, what's its gesture, what's its shape? I kind of want to do like a weird fish, flying fish sort of a thing with a propeller on its back. For some reason that keeps coming to mind whenever I think of this. Eh, let's give it a go. Um, Exclusions. Jeez Louise. That's not good. Um, oh, what's this look like in 3D? Just out of curiosity. Oh, neat. It gives it a little extra dimension that I kind of like. Cool. That's a lot of warnings. Yeah, they're all from that shader. Rubber ducky shader. Custom editor is equal to ASE material inspector. Does a custom editor specify include its namespace? I'm gonna blame David, because David's the one that made that shader for me. If you are here, David, just know I am keeping my eye on your shader. <laughs> I'm sure it's fine. What could possibly go wrong? Um, yeah, I think that that's looking all right in 3D. I think that'll look pretty good, actually. Um, it might need to be a little bit bigger, we'll see. <laughs> um, so we want to... So I made a triangle. I think I want to use, um, where is it? It's like triangle, long horizontal, or long shallow. I think I want long horizontal to start with here, um, which looks very, very good, obviously. And we're going to want to rotate this puppy 180. Question. For people that have used Unity before, do you tend to prefer doing negative scales or rotations by 180 degrees when you need to flip an object? I do not have an opinion and I'm willing to hear an argument because um, I'd like to have an opinion. <laughs> and we're gonna need another one. And we can... 
I usually rotate them myself. What's that I need to be at? Negative 270, huh? Nah, that's not right. So if it's at 90, that would have to be at negative 270. So that is right. <laughs> I'm an idiot. I use negative just because negative 90 is more readable to me than 270. Okay, right. You can do negative angles too. Um, that's true. So that's the third option. Um, what I was thinking is, because uh, if you want to flip something, you can just negate its uh, scale. See that? Um, which does, I mean, it keeps the same pivot point and it me means it, it, yeah, yeah, negative scale. It does make it kind of easy, but I, just, I don't know, it just feels sketchy to me. And for no particular reason. Um, you know, I feel like these triangles are not the right shape for what we need to do here. Because what we kind of need to do here, let me bring up paint. <laughs> um... Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is important. It's paint time, everybody. Wait, we need mu new music for paint time. Hold on. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, da, 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 da. Most epic music. <laughs> on kazoo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ads, 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 ads. Go away. Okay, paint time, right? Um, let me get paint up here. Paint, paint, paint. Um, 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 what do I need? Uh, display capture? No, we want window capture. Paint time. Uh huh, uh huh. And we are going to want that. It's overpowering you a little. Okay, here we go. <laughs> this is the only appropriate dev music. This is no normal dev music, I will have you know. This is specific for paint time. This is very important. <laughs> so... Um, paint time, right. We need something, I think, that looks... Oh, that doesn't look right. Wait a minute. Um, something like that? No. Oh, you know what it needs to be? It needs to be, like, two small triangles and then go back like that. That's, like, a general fish shape, right? The, are the kazoos still too powerful? I think they're okay. <laughs> They are incredibly loud in my ears, I will tell you that. <laughs> so I kind of want the fish to be more like this. So we need some small triangles at the front here, and some larger ones at the back. You know what I'm probably going to do? I don't know if you played uh, Anodyne 2, but they listed MS Paint under their coding tool credits, and I giggled at how relatable it is. Are you serious? That's amazing. I love it. Um, so I think I'm actually going to drop into Blender, and just kind of rough this out a little bit, um, and then export the shapes individually so I have individual control over them in Unity. Um, hold on, I'll make a blender. Blender scene. Okay. Okay, paint time is over. We can go back to this. There. <laughs> Um, window capture, okay, and blender. I have not played Anodyne 2, by the way. <laughs> and, womp, transition, there. Okay, so let's, uh, we won't, we'll, we won't be using my little paint, um, project as a reference. I don't think it's quite good enough to do that, <laughs> but, no. Um, but I think we do want to rough this out, um, in our heads a little bit. So, um, 
can just really simple way of making a 45 to degree triangle in any modeling program is just to make two cuts along the opposite faces place thank you and then just delete those faces and merge the faces underneath well not merge bridge the faces underneath but in blender you can just dissolve the faces and it makes a nice ramp <clears throat> um that is not front uh dang i'll just redo it that'll be quicker um okay cut I know I'm using my orthographic view to do this. Shoosh! <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. I swear. Um, and... Can select all those. Blender time! Yay! Everybody loves Blender time. Whether that be Blender the modeling program or Blender anything else, like just a normal Blender. Blender time is always an exciting time for family and friends. Uh, okay, so we can take that and then just um, copy. Uh, ooh, that's fun. Does anyone know, um, I can just rotate this. What, is it on Z? No, it's on Y, I guess. Yeah, there we go. And then we need to rotate it another 180. Is it there? Yeah. Yes, that's that's what I'm thinking of. Because this is going to be kind of like that. I need to move the other one. Move this guy down. And then... Whoops. No, 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 no. I wanted that. I wanted that. Okay. Um, then what we're going to do is have like a tail kind of running off here, but I think that should be more like a trapezoid shape. Um, yeah, I don't know why. Trapezoid just rings as having better negative space to me. Um, let's give it a go. I think we just want to create um, what? We can make it out of a cube. That'll work. And... Go ahead and do that. Whoops. So I learned in Maya, and I have still not gotten used to Blender scale and selection and stuff. I'm still a bit of a novice in Blender. Made my first texture mapped model recently. Yeah, I'm also kind of a noob in Blender, to be honest. Um, I'm turning this down a little bit. Um, there we go. Um, I learned in Maya, uh, like all of all of my modeling knowledge, for better or worse, is in Maya, um, for the most part. And Blender is pretty much just, I only use Blender because I can't afford Maya, essentially. Um, otherwise I'd use Maya because I just know it so much better. Um, but I'm sure there's a way to do this, like mathematically, but we're gonna just eye it out and it'll be fine. 2.8 has some great improvements. I went from Maya to Blender and like it a lot more. Um, really? That's really interesting. Like, what are some of the stuff that you like better about it? Uh, I, I started in Blender since I'm broke. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much where I'm at too, man. <laughs> um, can scale this up and move it down just a smidge. With recycled plastic? Recycled plastic? What? Ads, man. Um, okay. By the way, I saw um, the video that you posted on Facebook about the studio that you're working with um, at Poteet Makes Games. <laughs> Um, and that looks super cool, man. I'm really glad that you're involved in that. That seems like a lot of fun. Okay, that's better. And then we'll um, take this guy, stretch him out. That's not quite 
perfect. Oh, it's bothering me now. <laughs> it has industry controls, hotkey mapping that uh, uh, copies over Maya controls and makes it a lot easier. Glad you liked it, man. Okay, I'll have to look into those. Thank you for the tip. I will... Uh, I'll make sure to check it out. That needs to move over just a smidge. I should have just done this, like, off of a grid or something. This is not the best way of doing this. Oh, well. It's fine. I don't think anyone's going to notice. Um, and I'm going to replace these manually in Unity anyway. So I just need them to be close enough. Okay, got that. How long have you been working with that particular company? I can't say that I know too, too much about them, honestly. Um, so, if, yeah, so if we're gonna make just like straight up a triangle, we take this scale down, but I, eh, I've done it horribly wrong. Um, we'll do it over here. Um, scale it on Z, there we go. So, it, like, if we're gonna do, like, a, a, just a full-on triangle, we could do something like that. Um, but I kind of don't mind the idea of that having a little bit of extra dimension to it. Like, if we were to, um, bring that out a little bit. Um... I feel like, yeah, maybe we'll add some more details in here on this shape here, but I'm trying to think of how, how will this look with the pinwheel on the back of it? Will it read as anything interesting? Especially because we have control over these, um, these individual, uh, pieces of geometry, so we can almost make it like, wah, 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 you know, have a mouth and stuff like that, like that. That could be kind of neat. Um... I don't know. Let's keep experimenting, see what we come up with. Um, the point here, obviously, is always to just kind of work until it you find something that you like. Um, what if this had some extra shape? I don't mind it appearing geometric. That's something that's important, because if it's geometric, um, then it's mechanistic, and mechanistic is good because this is something that you're going to be, you know, shooting. So I don't want it to be something that you can have affection for outside of the fact that it's cute. You know what I mean? Because um, I don't want people to feel bad that it is an enemy that's going to be counter to the meta narrative of the, the whole game. Um, and I, I mean, I'm probably going to write in some cheesy little narrative like in the first one where it's like oh my gosh they're so happy and they teleport away I don't know we'll figure it out I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that, that, that yet I don't want to just do the same thing um that's starting to have some interesting shape to it I think I actually want to you know what I'm going to go out on a limb. Oh, do I really want to do this? I think what I'm doing right now is I'm making a shape, and then I'm going to recreate that shape with other shapes. I think that's what's going to happen here. Um, so with that in mind, I'm actually going to make this, um, make this into like its own deal and bring that out to, you know, just kind of reformat that into where those were before. You can kind of do something like this. And maybe bring this guy out a little bit. So it's a little bit more fish-shaped now. If I'm gonna have this much rounding in the center though, that's going to have to be rounded. Like I'm gonna need more edge loops for sure. 
But again, I think we're gonna recreate this general shape with like either triangles or something else. Um, so we can do some interesting stuff with that. Uh, so I'm not gonna go too crazy trying to get this together. I might just, I don't know. So many different ideas are running through my head right now. I'm actually gonna, I think what I am gonna do is I'm going to touch this up a little bit. Um, just so it's got a little bit more definition. And bring that out. And maybe another edge loop here. And maybe bring this out. Blah! That's not what we need to do. Um, you know, that's not a horrible shape overall, but I definitely think if we have rounding in here, we need rounding on the edges. But, I mean, we're kind of counter the point of, like, it being spiky. Maybe that's an okay thing, though, because, like, I like this shape better, you know what I mean? Um, maybe the enemies are rounded. I don't know, maybe some of them are rounded, maybe not all of them. Let's just play around. I don't know. Like I said before, it's entirely possible that we'll get to a point and then just be like, nah, we're gonna scrap that and start again. So, um... Well, if a fish had a beak, what would it look like? Hmm... Oh, maybe it has, like, a little propeller on front, too. That's an interesting idea. I don't know. You know what? Um, I don't want to belabor this too terribly long because I feel like I'm not going to like make any progress if I can't just play around with it in terms of the propeller. So I'm going to go ahead and save this um, into my assets folder and just pop it in and start looking at it. Um, maybe put a texture on it to see what I think. Um, uh, we'll call this flying enemy body. Eep. Um, and hit on back to Unity. Parrotfish have beaks. Do they now? Let's take a quick look at the parrotfish. Parrotfish. Um, oh, interesting. Hold on, let me, let me do this so you guys can see too. Um, Parrotfish, no, do I have Firefox installed? Yes, good. Um, womp, womp, womp. They kind of look like nightmares. We shall find out together. Firefox, um, add window, Firefox. Okay, name already exists, what? Firefox window. Okay, doc. Um, Parrot fish. Uh, for some reason, that's not coming up on the streaming software. Um, here, I'll just drop a link in chat. <laughs> they look really, really, really weird. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> here, here's another link. Oh my goodness gracious, that is terrifying. Uh, okay, well, good to know, good to know. <laughs> but yeah, um, let's go ahead and work with this model a little bit, see what we can do with it. So instead of having that and that, we are instead going to have flying enemy body. Go ahead and place that in there. Oh, see, we're back to the how do we how do we uh, how do we flip this thing around? And I think I'm gonna just do. Wait, why is the scale? Oh, because I didn't freeze the transformations. Blech. Oh well. Um, this is going to need to be quite a bit smaller, though. 
So the idea would be that it's, you know, something along these lines. Cthulhu clone that's just a parrot fish. <laughs> That'd be fun. <laughs> um, nah, he should be on the other side of the uh, negative point four. I regret clicking on those links. See, I'm link spamming in my own chat. It's very clever because nobody can ban me for it because I'm the only moderator. <laughs> So we could do something like so, so that it would like blend into our little circular thing on the tail. And just to give it a little bit of color so we can see, I'll make it into, how about the yellow? Why not? Um, so I mean, this would be, here, once again, let's just, well, for the moment, wait. Yeah, no, there's no reason to... It would be something like that. And then obviously more definition on the body. Um, I can't really tell when it's the same color like that. I think I'm gonna, first of all, scale this down a little bit more. feel about the rounded edges on the enemy it's reading it like I don't know what to think of it right now um, which means it probably needs some more definition in the body because the body is just a shape and is not characterized at all but just in general how do you guys feel about it like a really simple way we could get a little bit of character onto this is to just scale that down and put a different mat on it um, where's the smaller one? We need a little bit of 3D going on. So pop that out a little bit, give it a different texture, um, just so we can see, like, a, a little bit what it would look like if it was, had a little bit more definition. Ew! I don't like that. <laughs> um, those colors should be reversed. Uh, da -da -da -da. Um, I, I, I mean, obviously it wouldn't be like this, um, or maybe, uh, like, if we added in an eye, does that work a little bit more? Um, kind of reminds me of butternut squash. <laughs> that is true, that is true. <laughs> Not necessarily what we're going for, but definitely true. <laughs> um... Like if it had some sort of an eye or something. I don't know. I'm just like playing around with stuff. Make it a different color of some sort. That looks horrifying. That's horrible. Do we have a different color we could use? This is... I thought like it looks like before the mat was applied, like a pear. I might just <laughs> have butternut squash on the mind. Are you eating butternut squash by any chance? Be truthful now. Yeah, I'm not sold on this body at all. I like the pinwheel. I think the pinwheel is going in a good direction, but I don't think the body is. I don't know. I just... The shape... No, but I wish I was. Um, roast some of that bad boy up in the oven with oil. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's so good like that. Okay, a serious question. Very, very important question here. Do you prefer squash or do you prefer um, sweet potatoes? This has been something that I've rolled around in my head forever and I have an answer. I have an answer that I wanna know what you guys say. Okay, this is a possibility. We are going to like this general idea, but I kinda feel like mm, about it. I think I want it to be more abstract. Okay, we've got one vote for squash. Yeah, I think this is too defined. I think we need to go back to the idea of having this be um, something made out of triangles. 
Um, what could that be? I think it needs to be a little bit... You know fish, how fish have gills? That's a shape that is running through my head right now. Having that, like, those sort of straight... Almost like, um, not exactly like this, but almost kind of like what the seagulls have going on. Um, I don't really ever go for sweet potato, though. Wait, but why not? Sweet potatoes are amazing. They're like potatoes, but desserty a little bit. Um, have you ever had sweet potato fries with like um, whipped maple butter? It's super good, man. It's like really, really good stuff. I just don't ever feel like getting them for some reason. I can't even remember the last time I had a sweet potato. Okay, your challenge of the challenge for the week is to get a sweet potato and make that happen. And make like do the sweet potato thing and report back. Um, I personally am of the opinion that sweet potatoes are significantly better than squash. That's my view on this subject. Um Okay, I'm gonna actually leave Blender out of this for a second, and I'm going to just shape something out here in Unity um, with the triangles that I have. I'll add it to my shopping list then. Excellent, very good. <laughs> um, create empty enemy body two. Um, Uh, if we, uh, let's just say for a moment we had this red and yellow thing. What color? I'm almost thinking like blue, bluish, purplish could be the body, potentially. It could be kind of into. Oh, you know what'd be kind of cool? Wait a minute. Maybe this is not a lost cause. What if we vaguely traced this shape with some triangles, and then colored them differently? Well, let's give it a go. Why not? We're experimenting. This is like, I've made no enemy designs for this game yet, and so once we get one or two down, I think this is going to go a lot better and be a lot easier. Um, so that's the hope. Um, like, this is the first one, and it's going to be really hard to get the style down correctly, you know? I love sweet potato, but sadly I uh, can't have any for a while on a low-carb diet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally get you there, man. Squash is like way better carb wise though, isn't it? I'll be right back guys, I'm gonna grab some water. <clears throat> Can you guys hear when I take a drink? Like that? Is that <clears throat> is that audible? I can't tell on the mic. I'm kind of hoping it is because I know some people really hate that. <clears throat> that I think would be fun. Um... Let's see. Oh, dude, I can update the, informa or the information on the stream inside of OBS. That's actually so cool. OBS is really nice. <clears throat> yeah, we could hear the sink. Oh, man. That's like 20 feet away. That's crazy, man. This mic must be running super hot right now. Maybe it's in the back of my webcam or something. That's so weird. Anyway. <clears throat> wait, wait, wait. I wanted to see if I could find stats doc. Um, 
Nice, nice, nice. <clears throat> Any hoozles. Let us get back to this guy here. <clears throat> so maybe if we trace with triangles a little bit, we might come up with something fun. So let's give that a go. Um, I will. Oh, yeah. Notice that the um the warnings have doubled. <laughs> That's super scary. <laughs> David, what did you do? Um, oh, I'm looking for my project. That's what I'm doing. Uh, triangle. I'm so used to having my project um, doc down here on the screen. Uh, let's try triangle shallow, maybe. Yeah, I feel like that could work for something, maybe. So, idea being like, can bring this a ah! Okay. Just for right now, we're gonna bring this out so that it's above everything else. If it ain't red, it ain't my problem. <laughs> Disturbing but true. Disturbing but true. There's a warning here. Let me see if I can find it in my console. Yeah, there's there's a warning in my console that's been here for quite a while now. Um, and if I click on it, it goes to uh, here. Which, for the life of me, I have no idea what this is. <laughs> I've coded it a while ago. It's in fixed update, which is never a good sign. I don't know, man. <laughs> um, anyhow. <clears throat> Cyberpunk fish. Yeah, it is a cyberpunk fish, isn't it? Yay! I could think of worse things to be. If you're going to be a cyberpunk version of an animal, what animal and why? Go back to this warning will be the final final ship of the game, 100%. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> That'll be like... That'll be my way of golding the, like, going gold on the build. <laughs> so, what I was kind of thinking might be kind of cool is if we had a bunch of these triangles coming up like this to almost make a scale sort of a thing, like that, if that seems like a good idea. Um, and then we'll have it vaguely follow this shape here, and we can make e maybe make them um, bunch up a little bit more toward the head. Oh, these should probably rotate a little. Yeah, these should probably rotate a little. Um, like that, and that maybe, something more like that. Yo, what's up, derp? <clears throat> Good to see you, man. It's been way too long since I've heard that voice. Dude, it has been, like, literally years. <clears throat> Good to see you, dude. I was hoping you'd show up today, because I, I streamed at a time uh, yesterday and I knew you weren't going to be able to be there. Which is too bad. I did not do that because I did not want to see you, Derp. That's not, that's not the point. <laughs> so we could... Eh, it looks a little bit like an armadillo. That's interesting. Last time I heard you, uh, it was before I released my 2017 album. Dang, man. That is crazy. That has been a really long time. Do something like this. I want that. I want to avoid the armadillo feel a little bit. <clears throat> yeah. I, so I here's here's the story. Okay. Story time. Do we have story time music? Hold on. We need some story time music. Um. We've got the kazoo music. No, that's not that's not right. I've got it. No, I've got it. Wait, 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 wait. I've got the perfect music. Um, for story time. I need to find it though. Give me like two minutes. This is very well worth it for story time. 
<laughs> um, where are my playlists? Right here. Um, and I've got somewhere. I've got a playlist. This is like my work playlist when I'm doing work on my own. Um, I've got a certain playlist of music that I listen to. And there is one in particular that fits story time just oh so perfectly. Here it is. Okay. <laughs> okay. Story time. <clears throat> this is where I have been uh, yeah. since um Would since I was streaming last. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So uh, in about 2017, I was going to a college uh, a little bit away, and that's probably a little loud. <clears throat> and now I've recently got tons of notifications, yeah. So I was going to a college a little bit far away, um, out literally in the middle of a field. Like, I'm not joking. There was about 10 buildings and the college, and that was it. And so... John traveled to a school out, out in Russia, apparently. <laughs> no, but the internet there was like 10 times better than the internet at my house. It was ridiculously good, probably because there was a whole college there. So then I graduated and I went on back to my house and suddenly I was on like dial-up speeds again. Um, and I tried streaming once or twice and it was just totally not doable and then I tried going to like local coffee shops and streaming there and that just like was not to a doable at all and i tried getting a some office space and streaming there and the office um was had a metered connection and everything so then finally here i am i live in my own apartment now and i've got my own internet and boom now i can stream again that's that's the story <laughs> Yeah, and my laptop was actually burning my hand when I was playing Sonic R. And now I have a desktop, so I don't need to worry about that anymore. So, yeah. That's, I mean... First of all, I think the music was way more interesting than story time. Let me just say that right out. Um, but second of all, I absolutely love that piece of music. It's kind of the best thing ever. Where did you find this Shemansky music? It here I'll drop a I'll drop another sketchy link in the chat. <laughs> you can actually see like my entire playlist there, I think. Um, if you have any interest. Any hoozle, let's get back to this guy here. <clears throat> Old grandpa Shemansky made it, yeah, pretty much. No, my grandpa plays the musical saw. That's not even a lie, he actually does. I love clicking on sketchy links, especially when they ask for my credit card details. Um, I'm glad that you enjoy doing that. <laughs> That's all I'll say. <laughs> Dude, musical saws are legit really, really cool. Um, oh, why did I do this this way? Okay. And that is now not that it's supposed to be. John just needs one dollar to call John Wick. <laughs> what? <laughs> is this a reference to John Wick 3? Because I have not seen it. I've only seen the first one. You know, it could kind of lo look interesting if like these triangles are crisscrossing a little bit. I don't know, man. This almost looks like a Minecraft silverfish. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Uh, I mean, imagine it without this body here. We're just getting some triangles down to kind of get a general shape of the thing. Um, and then we'll be coloring it in. So I'm just using this as like my own little reference for doing that. But yeah, enemy design is super tough. I mean, for anyone that's played the original Rubber Ducky, you'll know that the enemy design in there was like literally nothing. Uh, I had no idea what to do, um, and I was way worse at just random art stuff back then than I am even now. And I'm not very good now, but, you know, 
That's totally a fish with a propeller on the back. Congratulations, Derp, you figured it out. That's 100% what we're going for right now. <clears throat> So we could kind of do something like that. So let's just outline it a little bit. Is the music back to a good level? I kind of had to adjust it real quick there for the story time music. John made the rocket gun, therefore there is no enemy design in Robertucky. <laughs> that is true. That is very true. <laughs> I kind of want maybe that to go more like this. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure whether I want these to stick out or not. Let's try it with them sticking out, and then if we don't like it, we can always, like, um, shave it off a little bit. I want these ones to, like, actually get the idea across, and then the other ones can just kind of do whatever they want, um, so long as it makes a general shape. I should really get back on my personal pro projects. Yes! Absolutely! Personal projects are the best, and often that's, like, where a lot of your good work ends up coming from, because you're really passionate about it. But if you do, I mean, honestly, totally post in Discord about it. Um, I'd love to see what you guys are working on. I really do mean that. I'm working on my first game in Godot, and I still gotta get enemy designs and AI going. How do you like Godot? I have not tried it, but I have heard a lot of stuff um, that's good about it. I swear I've heard several of these songs in the, uh, those winter video game music or Nintendo music videos. Hmm, wonder why that is! <laughs> Should probably have like different sizes of triangles too, because these are gonna have like slightly different shaded colors on them and stuff, is the idea. It's very similar to Unity, which I really like. Yeah, I can imagine that. I mean, Unity started open source too, didn't it? I believe so, anyway. Watching you work on stuff that was really bringing that drive back. Oh, good! I'm, I'm really glad to hear that. It's definitely part of the reason I wanted to do stuff like this. Be able to share with other people and see what they're doing and stuff. <clears throat> also, I mean, I do it for hours a day. It's kind of nice to have some people to talk to while you do it, you know? <clears throat> we could, like... I don't want it to be, like, super perfect either. So maybe something like that. This song too, this song is awesome. Yeah, no, this song's great. <laughs> right now, this totally looks like a fish with, like, a lot of hair or something like that. <laughs> It totally does. That's so funny. <laughs> it's like a hair and hair and some mustache or something like that. <laughs> By the way, John, did you sell your switch? Your profile turned into uh, Lucy Lou or something like that. No, you know what happened, Derp? You, it's okay, I have two other brothers, right? One of which is David, the the Dusk developer, and the other of which is the slightly grumpier, balding Evan Shemansky. Um, and the thing about Evan Shemansky is he likes to mess with my things. And so uh, he had a, he had, well, actually, this was my fault. He, so he had like his own, oh, we should mix in some other kinds of triangles. He had his own um, account on my Switch to play some of the games that I had. Um, and on a whim, I kind of switched all of his account details to other things that were horrible and terrifying in various ways. Like I made a me for him that was um, just not very nice to look at, <laughs> let's be honest, um, and all that. And so eventually he got back at me by switching all of my account information and he switched it to... Su 
I don't even know. It's like Lucy Lou or Susie Lou or something like that. And it's just stuck. <laughs> Um, I found 2D projects are, in Godot are easier for me personally, and I like the programming language in Godot more since I'm, it's a bit more familiar to me. Uh, what programming language does it use? Is it uh, is it um, specific to Godot, or is it something else? Derp, by the way, Lily was here a little while ago. I don't know if she's still here, but I know she's planning on um, being here. Uh, yeah, that was totally thunder again being here at some point. Um, just so as you know, uh, have you guys kept in contact on Twitter at all? Can do some... Actually, I think this, I think this is starting to work. I know it's a little hard to see right now because, like, you know, you're just seeing the fish underneath, but once we, once we get some interesting shapes in here, I think this is going to be really good. Um, well, not really good. I think it'll be workable anyway. Um, was that, uh, yeah, that was Thunder. Um, yes, it's called GDScript and it's very similar to Python. Interesting. Uh, that makes sense though. Is it functional in nature? Um, like, are you able to do a bunch of, um, like passing functions and par as parameters and like arbitrary object declaration and stuff like that? I'm mad jelly of that Thunder. I love being out in rainstorms. Yeah, we, we, we uh, I live in like Pennsylvania. Um, is someplace in Pennsylvania, and <clears throat> we get a lot of rain up here, man. Uh, quite a bit. Oh, you drew her a drawing at some point? Ooh, I want to see it. See if you can root that up, man. Um, can do something like that. <clears throat> I will be right back, guys. I've got to reply to a message here. Bump, 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 replying, 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 replying. I'm telling someone, uh, I've been texting with, uh, with someone for, uh, past month, month and a half or so, uh, and I'm just telling them, hey, yo, I'm streaming, you should be here! I'm streaming! Exclamation points, like, 20 times over. Come join if can. <laughs> Come watch me, I need viewers. Yeah, that's so literally exactly it. <laughs> and Dave says I'm not a shill. <laughs> Gotta shill to make the big bucks. You know it, man. It's all about whether you can shill or not. <clears throat> I don't, okay, here's the thing, I don't, I'm a business person at heart, I've always known this, I used to like run little candy stands at my dad's laundromat when I was a kid just to get some money and stuff like that, but I don't like doing like advertising, marketing sort of stuff, um, it, it just makes me feel bad, you know what I mean, like I feel like I'm... I try to be as genuine as I uh, as I can with it, but I always feel like I'm manipulating people into doing something that they wouldn't otherwise, and that just, I don't know, man. It doesn't feel so good. <clears throat> it feels kind of dirty, I know what you mean. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you can be super upfront and genuine about doing it, um, and I super respect people that are good at doing marketing, um, or shilling, let's say, because marketing and shilling are two different things. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know, I just always feel a little grody. I don't know. <clears throat> oh, that is not far enough out. Let's move this out a little bit more. That's still not far enough out, what the heck? Is that like rotated or something? 
Oh, am I? Am I crazy? Am I going the wrong way here? No, that's weird. I wonder why that is. Let's take a look. Huh. Must just be a rendering thing. Oh well, we can work with that. There we go. Wait, where did you where did you pop it? By the way, speaking of shilling, um, make sure if you guys uh, aren't following me on Twitter, uh, make sure to go do so. Um, uh, just because that's when I where mainly I post uh, when I'm going to be doing streaming and stuff like that. Oh, do you know what game? Do you know what game um, this music is from? This is from a PS2. Um, rhythm music game. Um, what is its name? It's like guitar something. Um, already do even our teacher streaming tweet. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Guitaru man. That's it. Yeah, I recognize. I actually really like this theme. Um, it's very simple, but there's something very alluring about it. I think it's really well done. Oh, this is rotated. That's what's going on here. Hold on. That one probably is too then. Yeah, let's just set that to negative 90, zero, zero. Okay, much better. <clears throat> Had to be or be back on my phone. Hey, thanks man. Appreciate you being here. I really do. I, for everyone that's here, by the way, thank you very much. I, I really, it makes this a lot more fun for me and it really is very meaningful. So I really do appreciate it. It's really nice to have the feedback on stuff too. Very helpful. Now, okay, now this is totally a fish with a beard. 100% fish with a beard. <laughs> I'm getting a phone call, do you guys hear that? Dave is calling. Dave is like, why are you not working on MaxX? Nah, I just did a whole bunch of MaxX stuff yesterday. <clears throat> Might even do some more of that tonight, depending. We'll see. So I just, what I'm doing here is I'm just roughly following this fish's outline a little bit, and then I'm probably going to take this triangle here, and is that right? No. I want to flip it. There we go. And kind of use that to make something of a tail that's going to then connect into the pinwheel. Like that. But what's cool now is I can then have um, a bunch of different colors that I can just put, uh, like relatively closely shaded colors that I can put on these different triangles to kind of give this that mosaic feel that I was talking about before, but then also have like all these spiky protu protrusions, which I might need to bring out depending. Um, we shall see, uh, but again, you know, it's all just, all just in testing stake. I think this is going to look kind of neat. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I have zero clues what's going on with this fish covered in gray triangles. You know, I'm of half a mind just to not tell you no. <laughs> what's going on. Um, uh, this is like an initial test for an enemy design, um, like uh, visually, uh, a test for an enemy design visually. Um, just to see if I like the general style of having them be kind of like these spiky mosaic sort of creatures. Um, so it's going to have a pinwheel on the back, and that's the way it locomotives. How do you say that? Loc locomo locomotives? Locomotions? <laughs> um, that's how it moves inside of the, you know, lore. But, um, but yeah, then I'm going to swap these out for probably, like, I don't know what colors for this guy. Um, I haven't really thought that far, honestly. But swap all these out for actual colors, not just gray, gray triangles. Das ist Eider.
And I'm trying to vary using these two different types of triangles inside of here too, so it creates some interesting shapes, hopefully. I love great triangles. They're my favorites. <laughs> oh, do you like the tree? Yeah, I, I think the tree's okay. I was told that the tree might look a tiny bit inappropriate by my mother. Um, so now I'm not sure whether I need to change the tree or not. <laughs> um, you guys can decide for yourselves whether you think that's the case. Your mother is seeing things. I need to talk to her about that. Yeah, I know, right? Wow. <laughs> I'm like, Mom, be supported for once! <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> That's a stretch for sure. You think it's a stretch? I think it's a stretch too. I didn't think it did, but uh, I, <coughs> I mean, that's what she said. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's literally exactly how she phrased it, Derp. A hundred percent. Yeah. I don't know, man. I just do my work and other people tell me when I make something that, that looks like other things and then I fix it. It's 90% uh, of my job right there. relatable my mom listens to my music that says the same thing jeez louise man your mom has a very active imagination <laughs> are you joking are you joking sonder So one thing we're definitely going to do as well is make kind of an eye for this guy in the same s style. Wait, okay, I was like, where is the triangle though? <laughs> So theoretically speaking, it should be rather easy to like mentally calculate how many tries this would have, right? Because it would like be... So a pyramid would have... One, two, three... It has five sides, right? And so that would mean ten tries per triangle. Right? I don't know. I think so. David Shemansky, cubes are the only thing we need. John Shemansky, triangles. TRIANGLES! Just like that. <laughs> David and I obviously have differing opinions on um, the meta value of different, uh, different shapes. I mean, let's be fair, the sack, sack man, or leather, leather neck, rather, uh, he's essentially a triangle with a body, right? I think that these spiky bits are going to probably need to be more defined. Because, I mean, this thing is only about that big. Okay. Well, we'll take a look here after, we're, after we've done some more work. Um, also, oh, this whole thing's going to need to be rotated. That's a shame. Um, oh man, that's a big problem. No, we can we can deal with that. I know. Uh, at worst comes to worst, we'll just add in another um, another uh, object. Evan, leave me out of this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's like fifty percent of what Evan says um, when we're doing dev stuff. Actually, I'm working with Evan on a project right now. Um, that is unannounced and that I have not posted about anywhere, but um, we should be talking about somewhat soon, I think, within the next few months at least. Top secret. Yeah, it's just kind of one of those things where you don't want to announce stuff before you have, like, 
a very clear vision of, of what you know it's going to be like. Because then people are going to be disappointed if you change anything major about it. You know what I mean? So we've just kind of been keeping it under wraps for now. Um, but it shouldn't be too long before there's something to show. I'm just kind of trying to bring these spikes out a little bit more because I just have the feeling they're going to get lost in the shuffle. In fact, overall, a lot of these triangles might end up getting deleted, but we're just testing it out. Something like that, I think, more. And then these ridges could probably come out a little bit more. Just don't announce anything that way people can't be disappointed. It's brilliant! <laughs> yeah, so true, so true. Um, that's actually not that many triangles at the end of the day. I think, you see, I, I feel like this could be kind of neat looking once it's got some coloration to it. I don't know. I'm trying to give it a little bit of gesture by like relatively pointing, um, pointing some spikes out toward the por propeller. You know what I mean? Um, what do you guys think? I mean, obviously it's kind of hard to tell right now, but just in general, do you think it has potential? That's a smart thing. I never really talk about things I'm working on because it gives you the satisfaction of announcing something and then you'll have less drive to work on the project. You know, there is actually some theory behind that um, derp where it's like, um, yeah, a lot of people have that thing where they lose motivation once they've gotten small bits of congratulation for like bits of the work that they've done from people. Um, which totally makes sense because it's like, ah, yes, I accomplished something. Now I can take a break or, you know, whatever. Um, so I definitely do understand that. I've always personally been more of the opinion that uh, like people talking about um, their work and sharing their work with each other is ultimately beneficial to the project. Obviously, I mean, obviously it is. You know, anybody that's ever done art critique before would know that, but... Um, <clears throat> but, I mean, it all depends on the project you're doing, too. That is by no means a global rule. Besides, it feels better that way when I announce it. Yeah, no, totally, man. I 100% see what you're saying. Okay, let's get some colors on this thing um, so that we can kind of see um, what it looks like without just being a gray splotch of nothingness, you know? Um, so what colors do we want for this boy? Um, make it green. Make it green? Green is not an aggressive color, my good sir. <clears throat> We sure as heck can't really make it blue, because that's just going to fall away in the background. Maybe we just keep the red and yellow theme for right now, just for testy testy. Um, let's try it, I guess. Green is not a creative color. Oh, destroyed! So that it blends in with the tree and the player will never tell Metal Gear Fish. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be the follow-up to Metal Gear Solid, is Metal Gear Fish. <laughs> Um, let's, just so we can try it out, we're just going to do this, um, and we can do something like that. I'm pretty certain this is Donkey Kong Country music right now. <clears throat> and can I just say, Donkey Kong Country has some of the best video game music 
period. I know everybody agrees with that, but it's so true. Its music is phenomenal. Super, super good. Konami loses a release of 3D fish dressed up as Solid Snake running around 3D. <laughs> Yeah, David Wise totally is the man. A hundred percent. Eh. It's weak, weak. <clears throat> so I think as... I, I'm starting to develop an opinion on this first run try of this character design. Um, first of all, I think the idea of uh, of having it be like a mosaic thing is definitely workable. Um, second of all, I think if this here was going to work, it would need to be designed better because I just obviously put triangles randomly inside of the thing and it just kind of looks like a mess. Um, I mean, to some degree, this is getting this is getting across what I'm hoping for, which is kind of like that jumbly, chaotic sort of feeling, um, but like vaguely resembling something. And so, if we like put an eye on here or something, it would um, it would probably help. Recently, I wrote some ocean music, and I basically just listened to Aquatic Ambiance a hundred times beforehand. Yeah, a hundred percent, man. Aquatic Ambiance is super, super good. Um, yeah, so I feel like, again, yeah, the mosaic idea, totally workable, but I don't think just kind of adding in triangles randomly is the way to do this. I think it's got to be more designed, or else it just doesn't quite look right. I feel like maybe it uh, doesn't really belong to the environment. Yeah, I agree, man. This is, it, this is not, this is not where it needs to be, but I <laughs> it, looks, it needs to look more clean like the environment. I thought you said for a second, I think it needs to look uh, like it, like it's going to clean the environment. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I don't know, man. <laughs> You're the artist. <laughs> um, yeah, I totally agree. I think it needs to look more clean. I think I need to redo this idea, but do it with like max of six triangles. So let's try that. Let's just deactivate this. Give it another go. And I, I don't think I necessarily need to use that. Oh, I wonder if that was... I mean, without the fish body underneath, it looks quite a bit better, I think. Um, just so I can see it, I'm going to just take a look in the rendered space. Probably going to take a screen cap of it, too. Um... <laughs> Look at it go! Woo <laughs> That's funny. Um, it's not so far off, but I think I would definitely prefer if it had a little bit more justification. Oh, sorry about the overlapping music there. Um, a little bit more justification for like its parts, if that kind of makes sense. Here, I'm going to screen cap it real quick. Um, just so I have some reference for it. Um, wah, wah, wah. Snipping tool, where art thou? I need your services, please. Whoop. There we go. We'll call this enemy test cap one. Leave that alone. Okay, um, <laughs> Crisis 4 tech demo, <laughs> so totally. <clears throat> okay, nice. I think this is an important step here because it's defining stylistically kind of what I want to do, but I definitely see what should not happen. And I think that chaoticness is not good. It needs to, yeah, like mosaics, they aren't really chaotic necessarily. They're they're very intentional, you know. BRB calling John up on Skype. That's gonna be difficult, man. I do not have Skype installed anymore.
actually still have it, but no one on the planet uses it anymore. I know, right? <clears throat> okay, enemy body three. Pip pop. Um, so how do we want to try to do this? Uh, so let's try, let's set ourselves, um, let's set ourselves a goal and let's say, is this Chrono Cross? Um, it is Al Alundra, Alundra, <laughs> I don't know how to say it. Alundra, um, if you pronounce it with the American twang. <clears throat> let's see. Wah, wah, wah. Well, so let's set ourselves um, like a, a goal of an amount of triangles that we want to use um, to make this happen. And I'm gonna say like maybe six, six triangles to try to get this guy into a shape. I don't know, I just, because the less triangles there are, the cleaner it's going to be just naturally. Um, so if I can use just a few triangles, that should be pretty decent, I think. Um, I don't know, let's give it a go, I guess. See what happens, that's not right. Um, so triangle, I do think that the shallower triangle was a good thing. I have a, play so, a playlist on SoundCloud that has like 400 plus video game songs and they're all mainly re relaxing. Dude, could you send that to me? Uh, I will probably play it during a stream at some point. That would be perfect. <clears throat> Let's see here. Do we want it going that way, or do we want it going that way? Um, what is the, what is the animal that comes off of this pinwheel? That's the question we're answering here, right? I mean, we've been doing practically a fish. It doesn't need to be fish-like. Let's just do a little bit of playing around with what it could be. It's called a fish that John made. <laughs> it's totally, it's totally a fish. I'm sorry, I'm making a fish. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, yes, yes. We could do something. Oh, you know what would be kind of cool? So we could have, okay, 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 okay. Here's a thought, here's a thought. So we could have a body like this and um, not just come to a point, like have it go back to the trapezoid-esque idea maybe. Um, and <clears throat> so this end here has a little bit of definition to it, whatever that be. Um, and then, um, and then we could, uh, like bring this place out, like give this a little bit of definition and just make it super abstract is kind of kind of what I'm thinking. Um, and maybe make this out of a couple different triangles. So we could do like, here's one. Let's try to do it, hold on. Let's try to do it um, at a straight angle like this. <laughs> oh, dang it, did I do that again? I totally did that again. Where to be my parents? There. So we've got that. <clears throat> and then we can copy paste. We can flip this sucker around. Oh, that's not right. There we go. So still do that sort of an idea. Oh, dude, 
what if we just do this and then we have like a head made out of triangles? That would be pretty clean. And then we could just use a couple triangles to kind of fill in the middle here so that we have some, some definition to work with. Okay, I, it's essentially the same shape that we made before, but it's just way cleaner. Let's try it. Let's try it. It might not be what we end up doing, but it could be reasonable, at least. Um, so that would be something like, then, enemy head. I'm just curious referencing that. <clears throat> so this would have... Potentially something like um, <clears throat> so like that, and then we can flip this around. Do you kind of see what I'm doing here? Um, and do that and then we can copy both of these and flip that around okay so then we've got our head but then this head well, these two pieces need to come down just a smidge oh I've done it wrong <laughs> um, that and that then no why am I doing that? Ow! <laughs> Why is this hard? There we go. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> so then we can have this be like there and kind of. kind of come off of it. <clears throat> and then as it moves, like when it lunges, this can like whomp out like that potentially. <clears throat> this might be a little bit too big, but we can always scale it down. <clears throat> it's C. Um, so we've got that. Um, we could actually, then it's just a square, but the idea, okay, I was going to say we could actually like even rotate it around, <clears throat> we need to set this pivot correctly. You can probably hear that my voice is a little bit hoarse. I tend to like, when I, when I, when I'm speaking, um, like into a mic or something, which isn't necessary. Because the idea is you put the mic so that you don't need to do that. <laughs> but I do it anyway. Super stupid. I don't know why, man. <laughs> okay, we've got those guys. So that should pivot correctly now. Yeah, that's much better. Um. <clears throat> I don't know. Let's let's work with it. So there's the six triangles, um, but I now I feel like um, <clears throat> excuse me. I feel like uh, we've gotten to the point where I wouldn't mind just like adding a couple more because it would. I think it would still be pretty clean even with a couple more. I forgot that I was heating up the oven to make fish fish and chips. Dude, are you actually making legit fish and chips? That's so exciting. <laughs> I've never had proper fish and chips before, sadly. Uh, copy that. Does your oven not have a heat limit or something? Yeah, what about that, man? So we could do this, and then maybe... <clears throat> I don't know. So I feel like this part of the fish definitely, well, I mean, fish or not fish, whatever the heck the thing is, 
<clears throat> if this was going to work, that would need some more definition to it for sure. Um, but let's not get too ahead of ourselves here because the, the idea of setting it up this way is so that you can color it interestingly. Um, this looks so much better, but yes, it needs more triangles. I agree on both sides <laughs> of that comment. Um, add more spikes. Okay, uh, I think that's a good idea. Um, yeah, I, I think it's, I think it'll work. I think um, this part here needs addressed. I don't think it should just cut off into the, the square like that. Add more ray tracing. Oh, golly, golly, gosh. <laughs> um, and all of this should definitely come out and be more like that. Um, let's color in the enemy head here. Okay, question. When I scratch my beard, can you guys hear it? Is this something that I'm sharing with you right now? <laughs> So, I mean, you know, obviously it wouldn't be like this. <laughs> um, and the head would have to be on top, I think. Um, and... I mean, we're just getting ideas here. It, w I think it wouldn't be yellow. What color would this be? Maybe we just say, okay, it's a fish. We're gonna make it into a fish. Let's go with blue and just try that. Let's give it a go. Um, let's say flying enemy body. That would not be in here though. Whoops. Um, needs more bloom. Uh, legit? Maybe, honestly. A little bit of bloom could not be a bad idea here. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think I have an idea of how to kind of spice this up a little bit without it losing the general idea. Um, first of all, I definitely want to... Okay, actually, before I go crazy on materials, um, something I want to do. Um, 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 um. These guys... They need to be smaller. Oh, that's not gonna work, is it? I could parent these to something and then do that. Just so I can try it. Um, so what I'm kind of thinking potentially here is doing something more like this sort of an idea. And I think if we're gonna do this, <clears throat> We're also going to close this up, so it's just a straight triangle. And then this guy, whoops, can kind of make a shape coming through here. Do you guys kind of see what I'm doing here? I think this could this could help a little bit. Um, and then start to colorize, and then have some like things coming off of here. I think this is starting to be something. I'm kind of feeling like maybe this head needs to be different though. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but we will work on that in a little bit here. Actually, one thing I do want to try since I'm thinking about it. Oh, now that is interesting. Huh, I've seen worse. That's not horrible. Um, here's a thought too. We could paste this in <clears throat> and rotate that around and then have a different shape like that. Or maybe we could
do something more like this. <coughs> Excuse me, jeez, drink more water, John. Hmm, <coughs> I don't know. I might want a different shape on the enemy head, but I don't think that's the way to do it. Let's get some actual colors in here. Beach related. Hey, just that we reached 10 viewers. Hey, thanks guys. Super appreciate showing up. Uh, sh uh, all you guys showing up. It really does mean a lot to me. <clears throat> Good stuff. Um, so flying enemy immediately drops to eight. <laughs> That is why, see, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, um, when there's a wild animal outside the window, and it's looking in at, at you, and then you, like, look at it, because you suddenly notice it, and it just gets freaked out and runs. That's exactly what Twitch viewer base is like. <laughs> Apparently, the way to be good at this is never address your audience, ever, because that's not at all going to be beneficial to you, to your viewer count. Trust me, I'm a pro. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Flying enemy body. Uh, one. <laughs> Why not? Um, yeah, let's. I guess let's try the blue thing. Um, We can... I'm just kind of like... Trying some colors here. Mm, is this good? Okay, well you can't really tell until the other colors are in. I will say though, I think the idea... So, outlines usually go darker on the outside, lighter on the inside. So like darker here, lighter here. I think if I'm going to do outlining um, at all, and this thing is kind of naturally outlined by what I'm setting up right now, um, I think I would rather have lighter on the outside, darker on the inside. Um, it feels, I don't know, it just feels like that's a better idea for some reason. Flying enemy body two. Um, and let's just do a shade of this color. <clears throat> That's... Oh, interesting. Love this Kingdom Hearts song, so underrated. You guys want to know something? I have never played Kingdom Hearts. It dropped to a thousand. A thousand and one now. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> Um, I kind of feel like this has to be the extension of one of these two colors, and I think it's got to be the inner one if we're going to do this at all. <laughs> Numbers feel more impressive and binary. Excellent. I appreciate that. <laughs> Mm, how are we feeling about this? Um, I don't know, man. Obviously, the color scheme is not right. Let's get that out of the way first. This pinwheel and this blue do not go well together at all, um, and do not make a cohesive whole. Um, so that will be changed. Um, but assuming that that was changed, I still, something about how this tail is forming is not feeling right to me. Uh, but I don't really, I, it's gotta be a trapezoid. It just has to be a trapezoid. Um, John, add a little black circle to the middle and you'll instantly fall in love. A little black circle in the middle. You mean like as an eye? 
Here, let's let's do let's do the rubber ducky eye thing, right? Um, so like this this sort of an idea. Um, can I just copy that from him? Probably. Oh, we'll just do it. We'll just do it again. It's pretty easy. Um, so here is if you guys didn't know, this is how this works. So this works because animals tip their head like when they're questioning something like dogs do that cats do that and that's why that reads like as an animal thing but i don't think you'd really be able to get away with um uh oh i was just gonna say uh, uh i don't really think that you'd be able to get away with doing that for people maybe you can though if you do that uh, that's actually really funny <laughs> I guess sometimes when I'm thinking about stuff, sometimes I do that too. And after coming back and looking at that lizard and then looking at this, this blue is not the right color and I want to change that while I'm thinking about it. Um, it needs to be darker. I'm kind of... Oh, I wonder if I should just open up my palette tool and not eyeball this like this. Yeah, whatever. It's all just test stuff anyway. And I think I want this actually quite a bit closer to that shade. So that it's more about adding a little bit of like, yeah, that's starting to be something I think. I genuinely do that sometimes. <laughs> That's fun. I, I, I appreciate that quite a bit. <laughs> um, actually, I think I might have just been struck with a bit of inspiration after looking at that lizard. Why, do, why don't we try to make some, some lizard-like um, paw-esque things, but like but like as a um, as fins, like its fins are are on the bottom, so it's kind of floating around and stuff like that. Um, I think that could really work. I still don't think this shade of blue is quite right, but I'll get a palette tool open um, at some point here. But um, ooh, <gasps> do you guys know um, where this piece of music is from? I know exactly where this is from, and I know what its name is too, because this is one of my favorite uh, pieces of music in video games. Your quiz is, what is it, without looking it up. You have to do it without looking it up. Paper Mario a Thousand Year Door. That is not correct. It is not Paper Mario. It's a point and click adventure, if that helps. <laughs> um, fins. Fins, 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 fins. I like the triangle thing. Let's keep with that for a moment. Instead of doing like squares, how would those look? Well, then I'm instantly stumped. All you know is Paper Mario. Is is that it? <laughs> um. So this body back. It's an indie game, if that helps, and it's a fairly well-known one too. Not like super well-known, but well-known enough that I would expect that someone here would would know what it is. Um, it is not abduction. Think side-scrolling point and click, like adventure point and click. Um, uh, let's get triangle 45, maybe. I kind of want to... So this, oh, I did it again. What an idiot. Machinarium, that's it, yes. It's totally from Machinarium. Which, by the way, is an excellent game. And if you have not played it before, highly recommended. Just gonna do that for the moment. So what would fins look like? Maybe the fins do. <laughs> yeah, I googled indie point and click games. Oh my gosh! <laughs> no words. No words. 
effective though. Maybe the fins are squares. Something like so. John, if I were was a fish, what would I look like? You know, it's a good question though. Like, if you were, say, a bottlenosed ferret, what would you look like? Would you look like a bottlenosed ferret, or would you look like a horrifying hybrid that people want to kick out of their house um, for various reasons? Y you know, you've got to think about these things. That's that's my point. I kind of like it being straight up and down. We can do one like here, maybe? If this is going to be a fish and it actually has a propeller on its back, this is going to be named the propeller fish and you cannot tell me otherwise. <laughs> Um, okay, okay, okay. <clears throat> do, do, do. I mean, assumedly it would be... Oh, uh, it would probably be a different color overall. Let's just do... Woo! That was exciting. Um, flying enemy body foray. This is surprisingly jazzy fish the hedgehog <laughs> Shh, it's not sonic it's not sonic right it's not sonic <laughs> it's totally sonic i'm so sorry everyone <laughs> um darker or lighter probably darker a little bit darker So there's one, so I, it's going to have like two of these, kind of like... Okay, see that's starting to be something. That's starting to be something. Um, just needs a little bit smarter placement, I think. Um, and definitely different coloration. I'm going to need to take this guy into a palette tool, I think. Um, what happens if we move around the head a little bit? So it's a little bit more... Um, I don't know. I'm gonna experiment with that. Um, try to get some ideas. But... Um, I think as it's flying, its feet are going to go up and down like womp, 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 womp. <laughs> so it's kind of like pedaling an invisible bicycle, um, and that's what makes the propeller spin or something like that. I think that could be kind of fun. Um, let's get some eyes on this guy. Turn him into something. Um, I can just do it. So is Hans Zimmer doing the soundtrack this time? Better than Hans Zimmer, Sonder. Better. It's, uh, hopefully, I, I'm going to try to convince David to do some of the soundtrack, and I'm also going to do some of the soundtrack, um, and I'm going to hopefully get it, some jazz artists in the area to help me out with some. I've got some ideas, um, that I'd like to follow, but, um, since everything is so music sound related in rubber ducky in general um it's gotta be pretty decent uh but it's gotta be like fun decent not just like rando music decent um and i'm just not good enough to do that myself <laughs> that's the problem so um yeah okay this guy do we have an eye mat by any chance chest piece eye well, how about that? How serendipitous. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, okay. I think we're getting somewhere. Um, is this a fish? <laughs> That's the question. <laughs> I don't think it's a fish. I don't know what it is. <laughs> it is vaguely aquatic animal that has a triangle for a body. <laughs> it's totally Sonic! It's not Sonic, no! <laughs> um, no, we need to... We need to figure this out. This is not quite right. First of all, we need to work on the back body. Second of all, the head needs to be distinctively something different from the body. So it's gotta be a different color. A little bit darker, I think. Um... Yeah, let's work on that. Let's work on that. Um... I was just thinking, maybe I want the eyes to be something different. John was paid millions, this is why he's not working 12 jobs. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> this is the new Sonic movie redesign. Oh my goodness, I can't believe that they're actually delaying the movie to be redesigning Sonic and everything. That's crazy to me, man. I've never heard of a big budget movie doing that before. That's like really big stuff. <clears throat> um, so flying enemy head. We'll just work off of the same. Um. Oh, that's way too dark. Okay, we'll work on that in a second. Um. <laughs> it's kind of cute. I don't know. Um, but that needs to be on top of the body. Ow! We've got a problem! No, I need my eyes back, please. Um, there's those. Um, let's adjust the color a little bit. Um, oh, I just had an idea for what the fins could be. Um, but... Uh, da -da -da -da. It's a little bit closer. It shouldn't be too defined past the body. I think that's closer. And then if we're going to do that, then... Oh, maybe... <laughs> I just had an idea. I just had an idea. Um... I want to go heat up my dinner, but I don't want to not have John's soothing voice distracting me from the screams of the dead people. Oh golly. Um, Sonder, I think you need food. Uh, if, if what you are saying is to be believed. <laughs> it kind of looks cute without the the fins so it's just like you know going toward its objective <laughs> um hmm this is tough man doing stuff like this is really hard i'm not good at this at all um or with the fins yeah I think the I think the fins are kind of throwing things off, but I want to give him a little bit more detail and stuff. Um, maybe add an, a set of ridges here so he looks a little tiny, tiny bit more menacing than he does right now. Because right now he is this cute little weird square guy with a discolored propeller on his back, and it's not really working for me. Um, I just noticed how much John and David's voices are alike. Oh man, you do not know how many times we've gotten that. Oh, I've got a great story. Okay, hold on, break time. Everybody take a break, this is very important. We're going back to story time for a second, story time. 
Um, story, 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 story. I'm gonna turn down the music a little preemptively here. Okay, so, I have a second job. And my second job is working for a coffee stop. A break time is 50% of the stream. Oh, shoosh. <laughs> I work well, don't I? Um, no, so I, I work at a coffee shop. That's like how I pay my bills for about half of my work hours. Um, and I work with this old time friend of mine called James. Um, I've known him for like 12 years. We grew up together. Um, and so we have some similar personality traits, right? And so the thing is, James's dad is well known in like the local community because he's like a doctor there and has some businesses there. Um, and so by connection, James is well known too. And here's where the problem comes in because James and I look fairly similar. Um, similar <laughs> enough that if you didn't really know us well, you could mistake us pretty easily. Um, and so people mistake me for being Dr. Moore's uh, son all the time. Like, so often. It's ridiculous. To the extent where I've actually had conversations with people as James. Like, they'll, they'll be like, hey, how's life? What? How's the wife doing? How's your dad? And it's like, you can't just say, dude, I'm not Dr. Moore's son. Really not enjoying my browser crashing? No! Is, is, it, is it story time? <laughs> But no, so it's like, I've answered the phone, I've done like little tiny little business transactions with people, and like, what else are you going to do? It's so frustrating, and it happens so frequently, it's so annoying. So then James shaved his beard, and now everybody doesn't even know him anymore. Uh, it's, everyone just thinks I'm James. <laughs> that's, that's the end of the story. <laughs> <clears throat> Plot twist, James has been dead for years and people miss James so much that they keep pretending that John is James. Yeah, that's probably it. <clears throat> uh, where's the music? Oh, it's switching right now. There we go. Hmm. Back to this guy. So, eh. <laughs> this is so hard, man. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing here. Um, where's the lighter? Yeah, that's the lighter one. Just kind of adjusting some colors here, just to get some other ideas. Um, You've been listening to this song a lot. Yeah, I've heard this song a lot too, even though I've never played Final Fantasy. If you haven't noticed, I'm not much of an RPG guy. Um, okay, I, I know what we need to try. Um, I've been putting it off because it's going to be a quote unquote breaking change, um, but we need to make this into more that trapezoid shape that I keep harping on about. Um, which should be as simple as bringing this up and doing approximately the same with this. And then adding in like a square or something behind that just to simulate it for right now. And that would come down more like here. Just finished Final Fantasy VII last week. Oh, how did you like it? I hear many, 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 many good things about Final Fantasy VII. <clears throat> I think, honestly, even, even more. Even if that means we have to squash these down some. Yo, what's up, J-D-S-H? Um, question. No, I have a very important question. How does one pronounce J-D 
S H D J D M D N X. Do you just kind of say didish dish but didnx? Oh, I know who is talking about Final Fantasy in the chat there, and I would suspect that they would say that. I am John. Okay, I'll refer to you as John. <laughs> I'm gonna have some real issues if I don't. Repositioning some stuff and doing some doing some ideas here. Um, <clears throat> so then, I think the idea would be to um, have a square coming back like there. Indie pop? That is totally an oxymoron. What does indie pop mean? Let's see here. I feel like this is going to be a more useful body shape in terms of like creating some character. I might need to tone it down a little bit, but we're gonna work with it for right now. Um, kind of see where that gets us. So do we want it with that color or do we want it with, whoops that color. I think, actually, I kind of like that a little bit better. And then maybe we can accentuate that. This is not terrible. I think, I think this could work. Um, oh, you know what could really make this work? Wait, 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 wait. What if the pinwheel, uh, whoops, <laughs> that's not what we need. Um, what if the pinwheel were on top? Okay, that's, that's starting to feel like something. Wait, I think that that, I think that this is not a bad idea. Um, that's starting to feel like a connected hole to me. Um, So then we can have it there, and then, you know, that would be rotating like this. Okay, no, this is starting to work. This is starting to work for sure. Um, it's not, it's not quite there yet, but I think, I think that's the breakthrough right there, is getting that layered differently. Um, that looks a lot better. Yes, no, I totally agree, 100%. Um, Although the body is still not quite right, and I think it's because it might be touching too much of the head, like the head needs a little bit more definition now. Um, it, I don't know, it just looks a little flat to me, I guess. And I think the pinwheel needs to size up a little bit more too. Um, Or not? I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell when the color of the pinwheel is so disparate. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, 
I want to take it back down a smidge so it feels a little bit more like a tailpiece and a little bit less like just this object on top. Um, spiky fish boy is less spiky fish now. I know! How did that happen? <laughs> We, we came in with such a vision, and it has been mutilated. I mean, it's a fish. I don't think it's going in a bad direction, but it is not what I was thinking either, which I guess is not a bad bad thing. Um, is that these guys? Okay, I want to try defining the head a bit more so he looks a little less fat. Um, so maybe doing something like... So, and then we're gonna have to move the square. Um, do I like that? Uh, I feel like the eyes actually might be throwing me off a little bit here. Um, whoops, that's just those two. The vision was mutilated by the corporate entity or something. Yeah, let's just let's just blame it on the corporations, I guess. That's fine. Oh, what did I just do? Oh, that's actually super helpful. Nice. Um kind of much better okay um i think yes i think that having the pinwheel on top is definitely going to help this a lot um let's bring it back a little bit maybe uh, I'm gonna I'm going to say a distinctive let's wait on that until we've worked on this more. Um, oh yeah, what about the fins? Let's put those back in just to see. <laughs> the thing about the fins, I like the idea of breaking up the shape by having something like that, but they don't read as fins, they read as tiny little hands. So it looks like a, it looks like a porpoise or something. Um, or, um, oh, what does it look like? I'm going to look up mammal fish. Hold on, mammal fish, mammal fish. Um, and it's not really a dolphin. Uh, it looks like a manatee. That's what it looks like. This frickin' looks like a manatee. <laughs> it's totally a mammal fish. Um, which is not quite the... It's not quite the deal. <laughs> the pinwheel manatees. <laughs> that is such a good name, though. The pinwheel manatees. I love it. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Let's let's take let, let's say no feet for the moment, but maybe you try to do something more interesting here, like add maybe add another set of triangles to get a little bit of spike action going on or something, um, to make it feel a little bit more fish-like. Oh, we could have um, a fin coming off the top, maybe. Um, I'm gonna see what this looks like in game real quick, just to get some ideas. Oh my gosh, he's gigantic! <laughs> oh, that is freaky as heck, man. I would not like to have that coming towards me. Um, you can't see the hitboxes right now, um, so this doesn't make any sense, uh, but uh, I turned them off uh, for doing the visual editing. You know why he's gigantic? because I am telling him to become gigantic on load. Let's take that out for a second. Okay. Um, so imagine that he was actually like rotating and the pinwheel like rotating, rotating to face you as he moved. Um, and the pinwheel was moving um, like every time he lunged, it would probably like real quick. Not horrible. Not terrible. Um, let's just mute that for a second here. Um, I'm trying to think, what would I do to change this little guy? Oh, also the camera is so janked out right now. Um, I think I must, look at this. 
I think I must have it set so that whenever it's on, you're on ground, it needs to go into, like, the, the vista view, um, and it just is the worst. It makes me no nauseous a little bit. <laughs> so he definitely needs to have lighter shades, first of all. Um, I think I might, uh, I think I might play around with flipping around the shades again so that the darker is on the inside and the lighter is on the outside. Um, the, interestingly, oh, you know why? I was gonna say these, the back here isn't quite reading right, and it's probably because it's just too disparate from the rest of the body. Yeah, look at that. Um, that's just too far. Um... So let's, uh, no, 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 no. Let's bring those in. Is there another one down there? Oh, the cube, of course. I need to label these things. I'm making my food now. I downloaded it Twitch on my phone. Sonder, you're so nice. I appreciate you. <laughs> okay, well, that'll be a little bit less egregious, I think, scaling these down some. Um, okay, and let's swap these two colors too, because I think that's going to read better too. Um, so that becomes body two, and that becomes body one. Oh, and I had the, whoa. Fascinating. Wait, what's going on there? Um. Hmm. I'm not a hundred percent how sure how I goofed that up. You know, I feel like these colors are just too far apart from each other. I think that is kind of the problem that we're dealing with right now. Oh, you know why? It's because the pinwheel wheel is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but I want to... Yeah. Um, take that to be a little bit closer to the other one. So it's more of an effect and less of uh, like a thing, if that kind of makes sense. Oh, it's so hard to get, like, exactly the color tone I'm looking for here. That might be enough to kind of just give it a little bit of effect. Again, though, I'm going to be redoing this whole color scheme for sure. Um, it, it's just not quite right. Um, man, I'm kind of kind of running out of steam on like things to change on this guy to make him look a little less horrible. Um, I think, I think I want to animate him. I, I think I want to animate the pinwheel at least um, and get him to like actually face, like rotate toward the player and stuff. Um, And maybe change up the colors and stuff. I think I just want to do some some editing and polishing on him before I make any bigger changes or anything. Because I feel like a, a lot of little stuff is adding up to it just not feeling right. You know what I mean? Um, John, help. I can't open the bag of fries. Sonder, I tell you truly, use your teeth. <laughs> It'll help. Trust me. <laughs> Okay, before we launch into that, I'm going to do myself a Twitter break. Check on some Twitter tweeting things. <clears throat> so I posted this GIF um, of uh, like that dissolving, uh, dissolving faces and blender thing that I was showing a little bit earlier. Um, and people were like, oh my gosh, that's like so interesting. And David was like, I actually didn't know this. 
Um, and then some people <laughs> got super after him about it because, like, you know, he's supposed to be this big, important dev and he didn't know that that was a thing, which is actually kind of hilarious. <laughs> oh, David. <laughs> Okay, so I've thought about it a bit for like two minutes, <laughs> and I think I've been coming at this with the wrong idea. Um, excellent work, making David feel bad. Yes, as, as long as I can make David feel bad, that's, that's the point. I don't think that the enemies should be characters. I think... What we're missing here is maybe the flying enemy is this pinwheel. And that would look really cool if there was a bunch of different pinwheels like that of different colors that were all spinning and stuff like that. I think that would actually look kind of cool. Um, the one problem is the flying enemies do have um, a hitbox that like stays behind them. So I think what that's going to have to be is like a pinwheel with a shield sort of a thing or something along those lines, or a pinwheel, um, oh yeah, it could be like a rotating stick. And then take this fish design, use that as a freaking fish. Y make it a fish, you know, it's a fish. It's not an enemy, it's a fish. Um, so I think I want to do that, um, because I think that's going to end up being a lot better in the long run. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, real quick, take that off. So this is kind of what I'm thinking. Um, so like, we've got these pinwheels and they're flying toward you, and then when they're flying they'd be rotating and stuff like that. Um, and then you can shoot them away. I think that mentality makes a lot more sense than rando flying fish with pinwheels on the back. And it's not that the fish can't have something going on, like a balloon or something like that, but I think the pinwheel is the important part here. Um, we could even have the two different sections rotating at different speeds, and I think that could be kind of cool. I want to try that. I think every time, every time I've done enemy design before, I've always gone way complicated and then toned it back, and I think that might be the, the, the moment here. Um, so the fish is not bad. I think the fish is okay. Um, I think I'll reuse the fish later um, for for like things jumping out of the water or something like that. So I'm going to just kind of take that. I'm just curious to see all of our iterations here. Hold on. Let's have let's have a little reminisce about the various forms of this poor fish. <laughs> so the fish started. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. The fish started as this <laughs> which is just ugly it's not oh my gosh it's horrible and then and then the fish got an upgrade uh, i think he went to a hairstylist and he looked like that <laughs> which is equally as terrible and not good this, these are not good designs and then and then we we're like this is way too messy and we got this, and it's a fish, and kind of a boring fish. <laughs> okay, well, this is why you do several renditions um, to get, like, different ideas. John, that's very demeaning to the fish. The fish has other reasons that he is the best fish in the world, and it's not about his looks, and it's not about his interests, it's about his intellect, and it's about his personality. And I, I, let's just be honest about it, you know what I mean? The fish, he accepts it, he realized it when he was 10 years old, and it's all fine. Okay, I'm gonna take those and just stash them. Um, and I'm gonna do some stoof with this. Um. <clears throat> Eight. Let's get this done. Um. Where's my animator? 
I think I've lost it. There it is. Um, visual parent animator, huh? That is not what we need. Hey! <laughs> we only have one error in the console! Or one warning. Okay, John, but he won't forget that you laughed at him. Laughter is a medicine that can be taken. <laughs> um, flying enemy animator. Rawr. Um. So what I'm kind of thinking is, oh, we're gonna have to set this up so that this can do this. I just realized that. Um, we need red leaflets. Oh, we'll do inner and outer. So we'll do behind leaf leaflets. <clears throat> um, and that's gonna be the yellow ones. That's not one. That is. Um, and I'll bet. I'm just gonna go out on a limb. And I'm going to say, and I'm going to say, I think those are all the yellow ones. Oops. Yay, I did it. Okay. <laughs> Bullying is subjective. John the fourth. That's, that's kind of taking what I'm saying a very, very, very out of context. But yes, yes. Uh, let's just go with that, right? <laughs> Nah, man. Bullying is not fun and not conducive for anyone involved. <clears throat> so this is front leaf clips. Um, let's get the end. Those are rotating on their own now. Okay, cool. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. So if we have, um, wah, flying enemy animator, we don't want do we want a base state? Maybe the base state is just him rotating like nuts, right? Um, I kind of feel like I want one layer of these to be rotating constantly, and then the other one only rotates when they lunge. Because here, uh, just so you can see. Um, so they kind of do this thing where they lunge in time to the music, right? Um, so maybe like one of them is constantly spinning and then the other one spins. Or does that lose the effect of it being a pinwheel? Should they all spin at once? I don't know, let's try it both ways. Um, see what we get. Uh, also, I think I would like this to be a little bit bigger too. Uh, something more like that maybe? That seems... Yeah, that seems a little bit more more in punto to me. Um, oh wow, but that collider is actually pretty small. Oh, uh, eh, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't think that's right. Okay, um, let's first of all center this guy up. Um, oh, that's not right. What the snot? Um, visual pivot is all the way up there, which is, oh, what have I done? I've done horrible things. Um, where's my desynced collider? That's pretty close. That needs to go down a little bit, a little bit over. Uh, yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty on point. And then I guess just for right now, we'll just make this the size of the collider. Um, give or take. John, will you be playing Sonic R on its 30th anniversary? When is its 30th anniversary? Cuz... Yeah, <laughs> I think that would be really cool, actually. So 
something like that. Oh, the Descent Collider is... Oh, this is all wrong. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. The Descent Collider is not what we need to be um, adjusting this to. Um, what was that? Was that an eye? I can't remember. Um, 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 um. Uh, cause the Descent Collider is... That's that thing that can have damage dealt to it, which was about-ish the same size. Um, <clears throat> let's real quick take a look. Oh, jeez. Okay, that's the size of the enemy right there. And so we want this to be about the same size as that. So maybe like there, because the wings don't quite feel like part of the enemy at some point. You know what I mean? Um, I think, yeah, about there. Uh, let's try that. Um, and we can get rid of that for a mo. And then the desynced collider is freaking gigantic now. Um, not sure what's up with that. Uh, oh, because that, ow! What a disaster, because that got um, scaled inside of the visual parent. We just need to undo, 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 undo. Before I started moving things around, I need to get my poop in a group, as they say. Okay, that was before I was scaling anything, um, which is the important part here. And we'll put that, no, 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 no. We'll put that on Pop. Oh, wait a minute. Why is that moving on Y? Oh, it's rotated. Okay, whatever. So that's in like four to five years. <laughs> this is Transistor. Uh, wait. Why don't I play it on his 25th anniversary then? Isn't that like super soon? Or did that just pass? <clears throat> I'm gonna get this guy moving and then probably call it there. Cause we have spent now um, a little over three hours <laughs> to get to this point, <laughs> which I'm sure everyone is frustrated as heck with. Um, um, so there's my desynced collider. Um, I'm going to... There's the pivot for that. See, I feel like this needs to be down here. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty certain that that's the case um, for this to function correctly. Um, here, I'll, so you guys can see, um, I'll turn that back on and... You can kind of see it from that. So that's what, this is the actual damage spot of the enemy. So you can see that it goes behind the enemy so that uh, when you shoot it uh, without shooting the damage spot, it just knocks him back. Um, so to actually deal damage, you have to like keep firing so that you hit the damage spot correctly, which is why this guy is gonna need to like have a shield or something um, uh, to like block that so it makes sense logistically if he's just gonna be a pinwheel. So maybe we need to add a little bit more to this concept, uh, but we'll see, I don't know. We shall see, we shall see. Um, I think I'm going to keep that in there for right now just so I can see what's going on. Um, this is Funkalicious Music, my dudes. I think you actually streamed it on the 20th anniversary. Did I? That oh, would make sense, I guess. Um, let's 
So, right. We want animator! Woo, animation! We can grab that, put that up there. Um, we do need an animation clip. Um, so I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a front layer and a back layer. And the front layer, mm, we're just going to do the back layer and we're going to have it constantly spinning for right now. In fact, actually, we could just do that in a script and that would actually probably be quite a bit easier. Um, I wonder if we should do all of this in a script. Because rotation, like, rotation animation is weird. Actually, yeah. I'm rethinking everything. Let's do this in a script. Um, in flying enemy visual parent. Um, flying enemy visual parent. So, um, these, this state machine is still okay for the moment. Um, but what I'm going to want is a uh, reference to a <coughs> rotational transform for the back, back rotation and front rotation. <clears throat> Both of those. Um, and then public void update. And we're gonna want, um, so back rotation dot rotate. Um, we could probably cache this vector three rotation vector and public void awake um, rotation vector is equal to new vector three of zero 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 but we don't actually want it to be zero 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 because that would do nothing um is this monster hunter let me take a look oh yeah it's totally a monster hunter try i played a little bit of that i played more generations ultimate though because it was on the switch Rotation vector. Um, does rotate? Do I need to multiply by time dot delta time? Let's just assume I don't need to for right now. Um, so that should, so long as I link that, ah, so long as I link that up correctly, that should just kind of work. Um, can, <clears throat> so visual parent. And that's back rotation, and that's front rotation. That should just rotate all the time now. Okay, it does. Um, nice. Um, and Ducky's eyes are a bit funky. Um, funky in what way? Tell me about it. They seem to be shifting around a bit. Oh, yeah, they do. Um, this is kind of a feature that I have, uh, planned, but is not really well Im implemented. But as he rolls around, his eyes kind of go out to the edges of the duck, and then when you stop, they snap back to the center. It looks a little weird, um, right now. I think the idea is an okay one. Um, but it's not, it's not where it needs to be. Um, like maybe they need to keep spinning after we walk for a while or something like that to give it the right effect. I don't know. <laughs> Good catch. Are you able to identi uh, identify video game music from what sound font it uses? Um, sometimes. Depends on, uh, depends on the video game. Are you? Is that a skill you have? Um, let's see here. So that, I guess I can just rotate um, pretty much constantly. Googly eyes. <laughs> if nothing else, that should be a costume option. I think everybody would like that, right? <laughs> Um, for right now, um, rotation, 
Googly Eyes DLC. Yes! <laughs> I would love it. Um, and we'll just do front rotation vector. For right now, I'm not going to do anything special for when they lunge. I'll figure that out another time. I'm just going to have them rotate at different speeds, at least. Front rotation vector is equal to new vector 3. Zero, zero, 003, I guess? Should it rotate faster or slower? Probably slower. Um, oh, we could have it rotate the other way. <gasps> that actually could look kind of cool. This is from um, Dust Force, I believe. Oh, yeah, it's totally from Dust Force. Let's take. Uh, oops, I made a goops. Wait. Okay, what am I doing wrong here? Can't I do multiple declarations like this? Oh, I'm an idiot. I'm not declaring a variable. I'm just making a statement. Okay. Oh, it's not rotating. Huh. Oh, I'm super an idiot because I didn't tell it to. <laughs> Front rotation dot rotate and front rotation vector. Much better. <laughs> there we go. Um, I think they should rotate the same way. I think that's maybe a little bit too much. Um, also, it needs to flash red when it gets hit, because right now, the feedback for it getting hit has just gone away entirely. Um, so we want to change that for sure. Um, which is actually going to be a little difficult, because suddenly there's like a million meshes that I need to worry about. But whatevs, it's fine. <laughs> just switching around that... Um, the rotation speed there. I might make that into a public variable um, so I can switch it easily. Oh, maybe it rotating the same way doesn't look as good. Huh. Interesting. Or maybe it's just not rotating quickly enough. Um, so first of all, I want this to rotate the other way. Oh! No, you know what it should do? Mm, this will be cool. It should randomly choose which way it's going to rotate. So they're like a whole group of them will have like different uh, patterns. That will look neat. Um, wah, wah, wah. Public bool. Um, we'll just call it is rotating right. And check this out. Okay, one line. I'm going to set this in one line. This is a super cool little trick that a lot of people don't know about. So, um, if I was to, uh, so you know how you write if statements, like, if, you know, my var is larger than 0.5, so this statement right here, this part of the statement, that is returning a boolean, and because it's returning a boolean, I can use this entire statement as a boolean. Um, so, I can do something like this, is rotating right is equal to random.range of 0 to 1 smaller than 0.5f. Boom. We just set whether it's oh we 50-50 randomization whether it's going to rotate right or not and we're storing that value in a boolean. Isn't that so cool? It's super slick. Um so then oh uh, I should do this as an int. Oh no, the whole thing falls apart. Oh. Oh, I could do it with that question mark operator, whatever it's called. Yeah. The reason we want to do this as an int is so that we can just multiply um, this uh, by it. Or, yeah, you see what I'm saying. And also, this needs to happen before. So, is rotating right is equal to... Okay, how does the question mark operator work? Um, it's, like, in which one negative one or something like that is that right did i do that right um 
So what this will do is it'll take the return of this statement and it'll say, okay, if it's true, then do this. And if it's false, it goes true to false. So if it's true, um, so if it's true, it'll be one. So if it's true, it is rotating right, which means that that needs to be negative one. Okay. So then we'll say times rotating right and that times is rotating right. Still an absolute banger. Uh, you mean the music? Yeah, no, it's super good. Um, nice. Let's give that a try. Hmm. Oh, right, wasn't I gonna uh, speed up um, the rotation. I was going to do that, and I didn't. That should go up to like eight. I just need to make these into public variables. Public float ternary operators are so useful, but I always forget to use them. Yeah, I so I never even thought of using them until I started programming in JavaScript, and then you use ternary operators for everything in JavaScript. Um, at least when you're doing um, React Native coding, which is what I was doing. So, kind of got used to them there, but I don't really use them ever in um, C Sharp. I just thought it would be kind of fun. <laughs> um, so, back rot speed and front rot speed, um, and that does not need to be public. JavaScript loves ternary operators. Yeah, it's scary how often you use them in JavaScript. It's literally like every three or four lines you're using a ternary. Um. <clears throat> um, okay, back and front rot speed. Um, can trans transition. So back, we're gonna put at like five, and front, we're gonna put at like eight. Maybe we should randomly decide whether the front or back are going to rotate the same way or not too because i don't know i feel like they've almost got to rotate different ways because that does not look phenomenal it's either that or they need to rotate at the same speed hmm. let's make it so that they always rotate different ways <laughs> what an idiot. Um, <laughs> back rot speed. The combat in this game feels a lot snappier. Yeah, did you see the combat test that I posted from yesterday? Um, uh, thank you, th by the way. I really appreciate that. Um, I mostly use TypeScript instead, though, because JS is such a pain. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think it's going to turn out quite a bit more fun than the first one. Once we've got all the effects put in and, you know, everything, um, I've got a lot of stuff planned so that I think will make it uh, quite a bit nicer. Um, but it's all a matter of, like, getting some, some enemy design down and stuff like that, you know what I mean? <clears throat> okay, so first of all... I don't think they need to rotate that fast. Um, let's try like three and four, maybe. And they are rotating opposite of each other right now. Yeah, that's a little bit more like what I was thinking. <laughs> Having that little lump on the back to show um, the uh, show the, uh, hitbox is, like, super distracting me right now. I actually think I might turn it off for the moment, even though it's kind of necessary, um, to tell what's going on. Ah! It's still there! <laughs> I think with, like, some different colors of enemies and stuff like that. Like different colors of pinwheels and like different sizes and stuff. I think this could look pretty good. We do need, um, this is like 100% from Diamond and Pearl, I think. Let's take a look. Um, 
it does not say on the video, which is too bad. Um, yeah, so, I don't know. Also, it needs to have a shadow. Hmm. I'm just kind of like... Hmm. I'm thinking about the different ways I could edit this to make it, like, different in some way. Um, I think I do want to have it a randomly, like, have a, a random amount of... Why is Ducky's shadow round? Um, really good question. Do you want me to show you something that is going to blow your mind? Are you ready for this? Okay. Ducky Shadow is not round. Ducky Shadow is freaking oblong. <laughs> it is so oblong. <laughs> it's yeah. Um you know, you bring up a good point. It should probably be a square, shouldn't it? <laughs> okay. I'll put that on the list. <laughs> um It's just because point of view is so finicky to work with. Um, that's why it's like so stretched out like that. So even though it's so stretched out, it it ends up looking like completely normal um, from this perspective, just because of how the camera works. <laughs> oh, that brings me glee. I'm glad I could show that off. <laughs> um, urgh, stretch, stretch, stretch. Right, let's randomize the speed of the back and front a little bit here. Um, wah, wah, wah. <clears throat> so we's going to... <clears throat> we can just probably say back rot speed plus equals random dot range of range of negative one to one and <laughs> we could even use the same randomization multiplier let's not though front rot speed plus, plus equals random dot range of negative one to one so what that's going to do is it's just going to randomly make some of them a little bit slower and a little bit faster um, actually these should probably be a little bit less severe though because they're going to start bumping into each other's values um, <clears throat> so maybe something like that. <laughs> I'm crying and shaking over Ducky's shadow is oblong. I'm so sorry! <laughs> it had to happen! <laughs> I don't think that's actually going to be the case for all the levels. It's just this one where there's a super harsh perspective on the camera. Um, yeah. Actually, I think I'm probably going to have about 50% of them be indoors anyway, so. Excuse me, jeez. Um, let's see. Let's go back here and get a couple extra flying enemies set around just so we can see what it looks like, uh, how they kind of change. <clears throat> nice that little you can kind of see that little bit of difference in how fast they're going really helps a lot um that's just cruel and i've now enjoyed the fish and chips and basket the glory of john not having any of it you know you know i'm here giving you all sorts of entertainment while doing my work and and you don't even send me food. That's the point here. You're not even sending me food. There's a chippy just across the road from me and I'm definitely craving fish and chips. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Legit question. Are fish and chips restaurants always called chippies or is that only in Britain? Uh, let's see. Also, I want them to randomly, um, randomly uh, go the opposite direction. Um, uh, 
Which means what? <laughs> um, wait, shouldn't I be doing that already? Is it not? Is this not working? Debug dot log is rotating right. I think this might not actually be working. Um, I've never heard of a chippy. Oh wait, uh, I'm fairly sure it's just a British thing. Um, yeah, it sounds like a British thing to me. I've never heard of a chippy, but I've also never seen one as a Utah resident. Fair enough, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> that is true, I'm literally doing backflips and clapping my hands like a monkey while looking at the screen. John just, oh my gosh. <laughs> I cannot even imagine what you would look like doing backflips and clapping your hands. I don't really want to think about it. <laughs> um, wait, are s I can't tell, are some of them? No, they're all rotating the same the same direction. What's my lo what's my log? All negative one. One hundred percent negative one. Ternary operator, why? Um Well maybe you can't do that with the ternary operator. I'm looking this up. Hold on a moment. Wait, 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 wait. Um C sharp ternary operator. Parentheses? Do you think it's parentheses? I was just wondering that myself, too. Like so. Uh, well, let's give it a try before we do some research. You think order of operations is bad? Yeah, that's entirely possible. Um, no, it still seems to be doing the same thing. That is super weird. Um, hold on. Let's do a little bit of research real quick. Um, C, sh uh, C sharp ternary operator. Um, so condition, consequent, alternative. Yeah, no, that's, that is definitely how it's supposed to be written. Wait, okay, back me up, back me up on this. So random.range is going to return something between 0 and 1, that value, um, but you have other things on that line. So I've got, I've got the definition of the operator, I've got its true and false case, and then I've got the, um, the statement that, uh, that it's going to assign to. I've got the variable that it's going to assign to. I think that's all that, that's, that should be. Eh. C sharp ternary operator always returning true. I kind of want to figure this out because I mean, it's it, it's pretty it, it, like you can just do it with an if statement, obviously. But I want to figure this out just for future reference. Okay. Um, Um, so, this is really good music, by the way. <laughs> so answer, the uh, if statements are more readable, if your code is going to be shared, in my opinion, but ternaries feel cooler. Uh, yeah, you know what? That's actually a good point. Ite. Um, I don't know. I do still kind of want to do it. But this is uh, this hacker man always use ter uh, uses ternaries. Ter yes, that's so true. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I'll come back to that one later, so it's not to um, overindulge on that point. Is rotating is equal to. And so another way you can do that, this, that is also fairly compact, it's a two line thing. S assume that it's going to be negative one and then prove it wrong. So um, if random.range um, of zero to one is smaller than 0.5, um, then 
um, is rotating, right? Equals one. Same thing, two lines instead of one. Um, and that, that should work. Just put some space in there. <clears throat> See what we get. Now they're all going to the left! <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> I wonder if this is a problem with the randomization in random.range. Do you think it's always return? What is this returning? Hold on a moment. It's almost like random.range here, sorry. Um, Man, it's been so nice seeing James stream again. Oh, you. Oh, you. <laughs> it's almost like random.range is always returning the same value. Um, oh! <gasps> you know what it is? Do you want to know what this is? Frickin' casting to ints is what this is. This is 100% casting to ints. Hold on a mo. Hold on a mo. <laughs> Check it out. Yeah, that's that's fixed it. Okay, so what was going on here? I'll explain it if you if you didn't already pick up on it. Um, this when I'm just calling it uh, from zero to one, that's calling the um, integer version of this function, meaning it is uh, giving an integer value back, but that value is not inclusive to one. Um, so one is never able to be returned, and because one is never able to be returned, um, then you end up with that whole little mess. Um, so yeah. Cool. Um, yes, Sonder, this is, uh, this is Kirby. Uh, I think it's like, uh, vanilla something something something. Um, hold on, I can find it. I think it's... Aurora area, possible. <clears throat> nice. Okay, cool. So that is working okay now. They have variable speeds. All of that is much better. Um, okay, I think the last thing I want to do today is I want to get them to um, flash red. Uh, when when they take damage because that's kind of an important part to the feedback of the whole thing um, whether it feels good or not because um, right now it just like looks like a mess because you can't tell that sometimes they're not taking damage um, so let's do that um, how do we want to do that so what was my system for this before uh, let's take a look at um, where is we going enemy parent <clears throat> um, okay, inside of enemy parent here, we've got take damage. And inside of take damage, we've got flash color. And inside of flash color, um, we've got this variable on color on color is lerps oh and then we've got just a prop set okay well this should be fairly easy i think all we need is a reference to all of the um material renderers um right now that's probably just a reference to a single material render mesh render my render is that correct yeah my render dot set property block um okay i think this won't be too bad at all so instead of having a single mesh renderer, we are going to have an array of mesh renderers, and we're going to call that my renderers, plural. Um, and this is going to need to be a for loop. So for each mesh renderer, renderer in. Why is everything public? Really good question. This is a Unity thing. Um, if you make something public, um, it, it appears in the inspector over here. Um, 
so like if I was to select rolling enemy, I can set all of these things uh, right over here, and that doesn't seem like a good idea, but then when you realize that those things are going to be put into prefabs um, that I can just like grab out and put anywhere, that actually becomes super valuable, and you want to do that all the time. Um, so that's why so many of my variables are public, and I don't really use many getters or setters. Um. <clears throat> Um, so renderer, renderer, renderer. Actually, wait. Actually, hold on. We don't want to do it that way. No, we definitely don't want to do that. Do it that way. We're just going to break making into giant for the moment, um, and not make them large. And I'll come back to that. Um, to do um, back to this because what I'm actually going to want is I'm going to want a reference to a parent object that's going to scale itself. Um, that's going to be way, way, way cleaner overall. And <clears throat> so down here, this, 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 um, if, no, 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 for each. I wonder if this is bad. Hmm. I might want to consider making um, making these into two renderers. Well, we'll figure that out later. Let's just see if this works. You can also use serialized field if you want to show private variables in the inspector. Really? Huh. I didn't know that. I wonder why that does that. John's saying actually once every minute. <laughs> it's, a, it's a verbal tick. I've known this ever since I took acting in college. I don't know why. But yeah, another one that I have is saying interesting when I don't know what else to say. Um, for every mesh renderer, renderer in my renderers, <clears throat> set the property block. That should just, I default to cool a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah, cool or sure or um, nice, <laughs> stuff like that. Um, so, <clears throat> so that, and then we need to get rid of all the extras for a moment and set this guy. Where is that? My renderer is right here. And we're going to have several now because the visual parent has expanded greatly. I think this is Super Mario Bros. for the NES. I'll check. Hmm. Doesn't seem to be. I don't know why that is. Uh, let's just say like 10. Um, <clears throat> so we'll just start at the top here. Work our way down. This might be really bad for processing speed. I don't know how um, intensive property blocks are. Um, so this might need to be redone. So this is actually exactly 13, I believe. Oh no, I lost track. Where are I? I think, uh, that one. Yes. Okay, so all of those are set, um, and so what that should do, Rubber Ducky 2 is a CPU bottleneck, as if the first one wasn't, let's be fair. Oh, I didn't even get to see if that worked. <laughs> um, I might just make his health ridiculous for the moment. Um, I don't, I don't think that's working. Let's just bump his health up to a crazy amount for a second. Um, it is super hard to tell if it is working or not, because he's red to begin with. I don't think it is, though, because I think it would be flashing a different shade of red. Um, yeah, that is pretty definitively not. Okay really pushing the boundaries of modern day graphics. That is a really kind way of saying it is not well optimized. <laughs> um, 
Um, so why would that not be working? So my renderers... Um, oh, do I need more than one property block, do you think? Um, I can't imagine that I need more than one property block. Hmm... John, can you come to Norway real quick? I think I shouldn't have made the entire bag of fries. Your problem. That is your problem and yours to face alone. <laughs> let's see, let's see. Um... Why isn't this working? Oh, you know, before we get ahead of ourselves, we should really check to make sure that my renders um, is the size that I think it is. We can get rid of that real quick. Um, let's give that a go. So this should be like 13, if, uh, if what I think is happening is happening. Um, it is zero. That's why you check. Um, it must be being set somewhere in code. Oh, interesting. Oh, you know what? That's, that is being called by the rolling enemy. If I was to come down here and say plus game object dot name, that's being called by the rolling enemy. I'll bet you anything. Um, yes, that one's definitely being called by the rolling enemy. You know what's interesting, though? Um, none of these logs... Oh, there's some from the flying enemy, I guess. But it seems to stop after a while. It's almost like it's not active anymore. It's just, I mean, this is a super sketchy way of doing this, but if game object on name, um, oh, sorry, I forgot to switch the screen, not equal to rolling enemy, so this should now only yeah, only debug flying enemies stuff. Why is that? There must be something about property blocks that I don't understand. Um, oh! Set property block. That's a thing, isn't it? Wait, 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 wait. Hold on a mo. Um, set property block. Where is that? Set property block. Oh, no, that's what I'm calling there. How is property block initialized? I can't remember. Props is equal to new material property block. Um, let's, okay, here's a way of being able to test this. Um, let's actually implement this for the rolling enemy um, and see if he flashes red still. Because if he does, then we know it's something specific to the flying enemy. Um, I need boss battle music for these fries. Yes! Oh, so he is... He is flashing. Fine. Oh! You know what this is? This has nothing to do with um, the property block. This has everything to do with the shader. We're back to shader issues. Um, because what the property block is doing is it's assigning to... Um, <laughs> slap O. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, I got excited. Um, this is assigning to underscore color, which is not what the shader has. Um, the shader is something else. All together. Um, give me a mat. I need a mat. Rubber ducky mat. Um, see, it's... 
its color variable is called tint. Let's actually open that shader up real quick um, and find out what that's called in the shader. It's probably underscore tint though. Um, rubber ducky. Where is the shader? There's the shader. Um, I'm pretty sure my neighbor heard John slap and scream. I'm sorry! <laughs> um, no, it's just called tint, not underscore tint. There you go. Okay, so if we go over to enemy parent and we change that to tint, um, that should work and now it should break for the rolling enemy. Um, that would be expected. <clears throat> So rolling enemy, yeah, no longer works there. And the flying enemy, uh, who knows? <laughs> Let's uh, give him a ridiculous amount of health and see if we can find out. <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't think it is still. Maybe it is underscore tint. Hold on, where is that shader? It should tell us in the inspector here, shouldn't it? Mm, oh, it is underscore tint. Okay. This game literally plays exactly like Doom 2016. Yes, FTL is so good! I love FTL, man. <laughs> um, right, right, right. What was I doing? Yes, we are changing faster lettuce tomato. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, underscore tint. Fa faster lube taster. <laughs> you could never get into FTL. Why not? Do you like strategy games in general? I guess, I mean, it's kind of a strategy game. It's kind of not a strategy game. Uh, okay, I think that worked. Um, yeah, that, so that's definitely working, but now it's destroying what the color used to be, um, which we can fix. Um, so, oh man, that means that we're gonna need a reference array. Blah, this is just going all sorts of place. There is definitely a bit of a learning curve, but yeah, it is a really great game. I would, I, you know, okay. I don't know if you guys agree with this, but I would say I think that FTL very well might be the, uh, the best roguelite. Um, I know Binding of Isaac is obviously the prototypical one, but FTL is just as addicting and not maybe quite as variable, but very nuanced in the same sort of way. But... I think is a better cohesive product too. It is a really huge genre. Yeah, you're probably right. Uh, I think it's so subjective to begin with. I guess I'll say FTL's my favorite. Probably, probably not objectively the best, but <clears throat> I'm much better at games where it's just me shoot. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Um, okay, so we need a reference array or yeah, because I'm actually using tint and not a texture to color those or i could just make a texture real quick quick to color them that would actually probably um make more sense because then i don't need the tint am i dedicated to doing that for every enemy um dead cells is the best roguelite i've not played dead cells I've not played much of Enter the Gungeon either, and I know a lot of people really like that too. <clears throat> Minecraft is the best proc gen game, in my opinion. Again, super subjective, but yeah. Um, so either we have a reference array of colors, actually maybe we need a reference array of colors anyway, just in case, or we could just, yeah, we're just gonna make, okay. We're just gonna make some some quick textures here. Um, so we need a Credo window. I wonder where the dude who got the top of the rubber ducky survival leaderboard <laughs> is now. Hold on, let's take a quick break and figure out who that is. 
wait a minute. This is this is important stuff. Um, let me get my Firefox window up and running here. Um, Steampower.com. I think he's streaming. No, no, I hit the speedrun leaderboard. I did not hit the survival leaderboard. Hold on a second. Um, once I get to the page here, I'll, I'll show you guys. Um, let's see, let's see. Um, add explorer. Add window capture. Um, oh geez, I have so many edge tabs up right now, it's not even funny. Um, that's not gonna work, we're just gonna do a display capture, <laughs> hold on. Discard, get rid of that, get rid of that. Um, and add display capture, that's fine. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Um, so I believe if we get on here was the way global leaderboards are using Microsoft Edge. Yes, I knew someone was going to call me out for that. Yeah, it's because it uses less processing power. Um, and I only really use browsing um, a lot for like looking up code stuff and YouTube. Um, <laughs> no, don't hate me. Ah, I'm so sorry. <laughs> for the record, I've only been using Edge for like a month. I, bit, I used Firefox and Chrome before that. Um, leaderboards, um, top score leaderboards. Yeah, it's this guy. He, okay. Oh, no! Wow, don't hate me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> next time, you know, next time I'm going to say that I've switched over to Firefox and just use Firefox whenever, uh, I do something where I'm showing you guys, like, score leaderboards or something like that. <laughs> okay. But this guy here, he has like 23 million. I, I'm not even on the page. There's you, Sunder. Um, whoops. I'm not even on the page anymore. I have no idea how this guy did this. I think he must have cheated. Um, I've tried to dethrone you on speedruns, but dang. <laughs> <laughs> Only hit number seven on speedruns. Where are you at? Oh yeah, sure enough. Dude, you uh, did you watch my speedrunning video? And everything like that? Because I, I definitely messed up on my on the speedrun that hit me there. Uh, that got me to that place. Um, oh, I see a couple of the Discord guys on here, which is super fun. There's Flatface. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. That, this guy in particular, just completely blasted everyone else, else out of the water. Um, and, I mean, he's also on the speedrun leaderboard, so if he was able to cheat, you'd think he would have done it there. I think he's just really, really good at games, I think. But, yeah, I wanted to show you guys that, because that guy is crazy, 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 crazy guy. Um... And now I'm going to close down Edge and never let you guys see that again. <laughs> Eight. Um, so, oh, right, Krita. That's what we're doing. Um, Krita. I use Krita for a lot of my texture making. Um, and which is really funny when you see how I make textures, um, because I definitely don't need to be using anything so, um, so powerful as Krita to do it. Um, and just blow that up just a tiny bit. There we go. <clears throat> so, that guy spent like 28 hours playing Rubber Ducky to get that score. Um, not even a joke. Like, some, some people have le legit put in, like, over 20 hours, which blows my mind. Um, I legit never thought that that tiny little ducky game that you can finish in 30 minutes that anybody would play for, like, 20 hours. Um, that really does blow my mind a lot. 
Um, so what I do, if I want to make like something for a single color, like we're doing right now, because um, we are going to be making mats for a single color, um, I just kind of come into Krita and just do like four pixels, uh, uh, four pixel wide textures. Because why not? It saves so much processing power, and it's not like those other colors are being used, or that those extra pixels are going to be used for anything. Um, so I can um, go ahead and I'm just uh, over here in Unity, and I'm going to copy over the colors that I've chosen for the mat. Um, or, you know what? I could even do this the right way, and I could do all your rubber ducky optimization efforts go into textures. It means a lot, it really does. I've done some other optimizations like caching and stuff like that too, um, to try to make it not quite so horrifying. And I mean, it is working. This, the frame rate is very stable, which is good, but we need to keep it that way as we go along, which is not going to be easy here. So you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm real quick gonna add, um, um, oh, I accidentally, what did I do here? Oh, I see. Um, I'm real quick going to add in Unity window right at the bottom here. Oop. Okay, um, so I'm just going over here and I'm going to grab up um, some pinwheel mat. <clears throat> I'm gonna grab up the hex values for these colors and just make them into mats. Check out K Krieger for some crazy texture optimization. Oh, really? I will definitely do that. Thank you for the heads up. <clears throat> so I'm gonna come in here and just go ahead and where's my bucket? Paste that in. So 16 pixel texture, we can export. And we're gonna put this, I guess all of this is going in. Um, oh, optimization in general, really? Yeah, that's actually super good. Um, pinwheel, dark. Wait, is this dark? Hold on a mo. That is the dark, okay. Pinwheel, red, dark. Yes, yes. Wait, what did I just do? Oh, that, why did that not do that? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, it's a small FPS fit into 97. Oh, neat! I think I, I think I remember hearing about that. <laughs> yeah, it is Final Fantasy VII. Ta-da! <laughs> Um, and so there we go. There's my alt tab set up. And now we can grab hex value from this one and we can make that into a texture and export that as light. The worst Final Fantasy. Oh, <laughs> I am ignoring Twitch chat for the next 10 minutes. Oh dear. <laughs> There is gonna be a fight tonight. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I think people would have found you um, it, had you not had you not gone back on that statement. <clears throat> um, okay, so this is yellow light. Wheel. Hello light. And, oh, forgot to. And then here's pinwheel yellow dark. Am I doing this right? Yeah. Yellow dark. Okay. Um, and now I can, instead of using those on tint, um, I can come back here and do pinwheel red dark and have that have no tint and it's the same color 
and I can do pinwheel light and have no tint. Oh, I kind of like that better. Huh. Anyway, <laughs> have no tint. Um, and that's uh, the original color. I'm going to change that though. Um, and then do the same here. Yellow light. No tint. And yellow dark. No tint. Okay, excellent. So what this now should do um, is this should make it so that um, it's not stark white when we start and it still is able to flash red when it actually takes damage, which it does. Nice. All right, all that is fixed up. Um, so that's all good. Um, let me just go over here and while I'm thinking about it, turn this guy back to having 10 health. And now we're going to first um, flying enemy. We're going to replace the prefab. Yes. Um, and then we're going to and those we want to spread out all over the place. Um, um, and we can kind of get an idea of whether this is reading all right. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're getting there. When these guys are different, different colors, probably something that is not red <laughs> related might be, might be the way we do that. Um, that's really going to help sell this whole deal. Oh, you know what we should do since we're thinking about it? Let's change the particle colors that they splooch out um, when they get hit um, and stuff. Definitely, definitely, definitely let's do that. That's, that'll, um, that'll really make that pop a little bit better. Um, so once again, bye bye. Hey, by the way, everyone, thanks for um, having me hold pretty consistently seven to eight people um, for most of the stream here. That's super, super fun to see. Uh, it really makes this uh, into something I'd like to do more of. <clears throat> I appreciate it. Much, much. Um, okay, so I've got... Can you see it? No, it's being blocked. Hold on. I can get rid of that for the moment. Um... So down here, I have uh, this little picker for being able to tell uh, the system what colors of particles each enemy should have when they get hit and when they die and stuff. Um, so we're just going to change these to all of the colors that this particular enemy has in his pinwheel, which I think will be kind of cool. Um, and we'll add another one in for that. <clears throat> um, am I using version control for backups and feature tracking? I am using version control for backups. I'm using GitLab um, for backups feature tracking. Um, yes, to an extent, I'm mostly just pushing to a single repository um, with no branches um, because I'm the only one that's working on it right now. So um, did I just, huh, whoops. Um, so that should do that. And now let's do the same for colors. Shadow the Hedgehog might already be taken by Rouge the Bat. <laughs> okay, I have no idea what was happening in chat, but I don't think I want to know either. <laughs> um, and we can just steal these colors. And copying these over. <clears throat> I think this will look really cool now. Nice. I mean, it makes way more sense than 
when they were um, just rando, rando colors that didn't mean anything to the enemy. This music is really distracting me right now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> John, can you please play Shadow the Hedgehog on stream? You already did both of the adventure games, so it's only fair. That is an excellent point. Um, yeah, that might need to happen. Um, oh, is it Pikmin? Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, this is feeling quite a bit better than um, when we had the fish thing as our enemy. Nice. Uh, not bad. Uh, I think... To make this pop a little bit more, though, I kind of want to desaturate all of these a little. Um, Oh yeah, desaturating those definitely has helped a little bit. Oh, wait! That's not desaturated. Holy crap, I'm literally spouting lies. Get out of here! Is this the one that I desaturated? Yeah. Um, we can copy him instead. This almost, uh, this looks almost as good as Snake on the Nokia. <laughs> I don't even know what to say to you. <laughs> Um, is it better with the desaturated? I think so. It's a little bit less visually cluttery, you know? The way it's supposed to be played. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay, so... Oh, this is a known glitch, by the way. What's happened here is he's gotten pushed on the Z-axis to the point where now he's not actually interacting with anything. You can see he's not hitting me either. Um, if you're wondering what's going on there. Um, okay, I think this is taking taking shape a little bit more. Obviously, the, um, the hitbox thing is still not looking very good. Um, I wonder, I, I'm just curious, what does this look like without that? Uh, I kind of want to know. Um, and I should be able to take that out pretty quickly with, uh, oh, we'll just do it this way. <coughs> Wait. Oh, it's in here. I was confusing myself. Okay, that should get rid of it. Let's see what the whole group of them looks like. We tons of enemies. Ah. Yeah. Nice. Uh I have little complaints in terms of the direction. Um I kinda like <laughs> okay. Um, you guys, <laughs> this is maybe a strangely specific reference, but do you guys know, um, Starburst Cubes? Uh, <laughs> that's what the, that's what when they, uh, the little cubes that, uh, happen when they fly off the screen, they're literally like the Starburst Cube colors. That is what they are, which is completely unintentional, but, I mean, it looks like candy. That can't be that bad. <laughs> So weird. Um, I'm gonna, I think, get a few different colorations of these pinwheel guys put together, and they randomly select from a coloration, so there's, like, a bunch of different colors flying all over the place. Um, when you send a snap with your own music in it, and someone asks what music it is because they want to listen to it, ooh, satisfaction! Nice, man. Nice, nice, nice. I don't know. What are you guys feeling about this? Wait, you're ditching the manatee? I am. I'm going to repurpose the manatee as, like, a background object thing. Like, something that's jumping out of the ocean or something like that. Because I just... I didn't like it. 
it wasn't the direction I wanted to take. Um, and I'm actually really glad that I did, because I like these guys a lot better. Um, or I, I will once they kind of hit um, what I'm kind of planning for them, you know? Most people I send snaps just ignore me. Smiley face, that's so sad! <laughs> What do you guys think? Do you like this? Do you like the direction? I want your feedback. Imagine, by the way, that these guys are probably going to have some little shield-esque thing in front of them. Um. Eh. Um, because that's gonna tell you, like, where you cannot hit them, if that kind of makes sense. I think this has the proper balance of readable and, um... <laughs> I'm getting a yes. <laughs> I think it has a proper balance of like readable and um, a little hectic. Looks pretty good. Okay, what what could I do to make it look better? Tell me about it. I really don't know. Well, I think once um, we get. Besides changing everything into manatees. <laughs> um, fair enough. I understand the qualms. I, I really do. <laughs> Remember manatee and the human. <laughs> oh, that's almost too good to pass up. Remember manatee and the humanity. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Okay, um, yeah, I think I have some ideas of where I want to take these guys. Um, I got, got a message on WhatsApp, but I deadly wasn't sure if it was the stream for a second. <laughs> Good, excellent. That is what I want to hear. Um, so I think I've got some ideas of how I want to change these guys around um, to make it a little bit uh, more interesting and satisfying. Um, first of all, I'm going to have a few different color palettes that they're going to randomly choose from. Um, second of all, uh, they I'm going to do some dynamic elements with like their spinning, so like they spin more after they lunge, um, sort of a thing. Third of all, um, I'm going to make them change size ever so slightly from one to another, um, so that there's a little bit of personality to each one of them. Um, and all of those things put together, I think will really make, I think will really make this pop. Um, and I do, I think I do like, I'm, I'm still on the, the idea of, I think I like having these guys be just rando little spiky pinwheel things rather than the manatees. Cause the manatee, I mean, the manatee was fun and cute. But I think fun and cute does need to be saved for, like, the background um, animal elements. Um, I don't know. I'm going to keep working on it. Uh, I don't think it's to where it needs to be yet to be what I want uh, these enemies to look like. Um, and they definitely need some sort of visual indicator of the shielding stuff. I don't want to be destroying fun and cute things, yes. Yeah, that's kind of why in the original, um, the spikies were how they were. Um, so that it wasn't like, oh, you're going through massacring all the penguins. You know what I mean? Um, and I do think that uh, firing at these guys is pretty satisfying, and or will be pretty satisfying um, once they have like the proper defense indicators and stuff. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna keep working on it maybe tonight uh, or maybe maybe like tomorrow or in a couple days or so um, but I think for right now uh, I'm going to uh, go get some food and stuff like that 
um, just kind of take care of life a little bit. I need to do the dishes. I, you guys can't see this, but I have an empty honey bubble on my desk. Um, two plates, one of which is covered in ketchup, an empty peanut butter jar. Um, oh, more plates over on that side. Uh, the leftovers of Chinese takeout um, and a very moldy apple. <laughs> and all of these things need to leave. <laughs> Um, did you go food shopping or did you eat the nuggies? You know what I did? I made myself a peanut butter and honey sandwich, which is why there is an empty peanut butter jar and an empty jar of honey on my desk right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, should a nug eat? I did eat a couple chicken nuggets. Does that help? I ate like, I don't know, five or six. Because, I mean, you need some nuggets in your life. Obviously. <laughs> I did not stuff them with beans or spray cooking spray on them, though, which I know is incredibly disappointing. But, yeah. Anyway, uh, thanks so much uh, for everybody that showed up. I super appreciate it. Um, uh, if you don't, uh, make sure to follow my Twitter, uh, which is linked below. Um, and if you really do want to help me out, uh, make sure to check out my Patreon. Uh, if you don't feel like you need to give anything, but if you want to... I would super, super appreciate it, because that's uh, how I'm hoping to be able to turn this into a full-time gig. But, yeah, thanks again. I will see all of you guys um, a little bit later.